Hello, guys. Um, Dub don't do open gym no more. So, hey, it's just me. Hi, how you guys doing? How you guys doing? Um, Ray, you thought you thought I hate you thought I didn't like Ant. That's tough. Um, I like Ant. I think I, I think Ant's nice. And facts by my man, two shows back to back, man. I'm working hard, man. Hard at work. But yeah, dub dub retired. So just us, just us. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you guys a link. Um, but yeah, so the title, past NBA players who could survive in the current era. Um, I wanted to show some love to some old players. I wanted to I wanted to um get you guys' opinions on what players you think maybe wouldn't be better. But would at least like look similar to what they did in their era, in today's era, who the game benefits. Cause we spent a lot of time talking about why this guy wouldn't translate and that guy wouldn't translate and why this guy's bad and why that guy's bad. Um, whatever the case. So I wanna I wanna give some older players some love. And I put Will on the thumbnail because it's fun. But um yeah, I sent you guys the link. Feel free to join up. Um we got we got Logan here. Hello, the Bill Russell super fan. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Doing good. How you doing, Mark? I can't complain. Um, doing the show by myself. We move. But I see that. Yeah, dub, dub retired. Dub retired. Does that mean you're actually going to talk today? Salute, salute. What's going on, fellas? Um, but yeah, do you guys have any young? Have any players from the past who you want to give a special shout out to? For sure. who would, hey, who would look yeah, I got a, I got a couple. Um, Yo, Dumas. Uh, uh, I don't know if Joe would translate. Joe a little too small. Okay, can we um, talk about that? Hold on, wait a minute. He just said you know, hold on. He did say he don't know if Joe would translate. You must have got Jalen Brunson in his era. Yeah, plus, Jaylen you forget Brunson that Joe is Dumas like, is also is like two hundred and like ten pounds. Well, so like, what does that matter? You say he was small. He is. He's Joe, a fortune. Joe, Joe Dumars is six. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, Joe about? Dumars was six. That's what my Joe Dumars was. Six two. Bro, Joe Dumars was one of the best defensive. Joe Dumars was one of the best defensive guards back then. Exactly. Absolutely. In this era, he would be the same thing. No, he would not. He's too small. He's a four-time All-NBA defensive player. He's a six-time All-Star from the 90s to 97 when Jordan was the premier guard. He was a shooting guard going up against him. He was one of the best defenders. And again, too, the GOAT known as Jordan. This guy was averaging like 17 points, 46% from the field, and he also was a 38% three-point shooter. This is back in the 90s when they didn't even believe in three-point. He's 38%. You mean to tell me that 38% ain't going to translate to... I don't think well, offensively no, Joe would have a difficult time. I'm talking defensively. An 84% free throw shooter, as well as what he was able to do defensively and offensively, there's tons of teams that can translate to him. And, I and he got a finals MVP. Those teams where he can play for. That finals MVP. That's, that's and he got a finals MVP. I'm about talking that. about finals his stature well, as a man. Play? If I'm six, if I'm six, the average point guard in the NBA now is what six four minimum. Around he's there, two, yeah. he's he's two inches shorter and about thirty pounds lighter. He couldn't. He he just couldn't. The way he bullied people in the '90s and the '80s. He can't do that in today. That is nonsensical. Oh, it's not. Well, how is that? How? The son just signed Isaiah Thomas. 8%. Yeah, but I, I, I think, wait, just one mic at a time, please, just for listening purposes. But the son signing Isaiah Thomas isn't proof that Joe Dumas would be just as good as he was in the in the 80s as now. I think well, saying, what saying? saying a two guard who is, what, six. Three one eighty five is too small yeah. for today's game. He's Why not is crazy. That well, is crazy. Well, That's two guards are his size. That's straight up dumb. Is Do nope. Donovan Mitchell and who else? What other two guards are Joe Dumas size? I uh, you got you got you got Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, and you got uh Jalen Brunson. Um, trade. Um, Oh, he's a point guard. Yeah, I was gonna say he's still a guard. You said guard. I said no. I said two guard. I explicitly. Okay, I explicitly. That's what I was making sure. Yeah, I mean, but then point guard, shooting guard. What does it matter? He's still a guard. Well, I asked. And he's small. I said. I said two. Unless you think Joe Dumas gonna play the one. 
I mean, he would. He could. He could pause. So I think ideally play. Joe Dumar should he play score, two, though. He was a scorer and a defender. I'm, that's why I'm, ask, I'm just asking for two gods because that's why Joe Dumas played, who was Joe Dumas' size in today's game. Good point. But, 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 but Mars, you do know a lot of these guys be you do know a lot of these guys be posted at eight, uh height they not. Some of these guys don't be the height that they say they is. Okay, they be you way don't have, shorter you don't than have to give me their lifted, listed height. What two guards in the league now do you think are six three? Oh uh, well, a lot of those guys look six three to me. A lot of them yeah, guys so don't look no taller than about Ooh, six, wait, six three. Uh, Mango. Who, who, who looks so weird talking it, about Mango? One at a time. A, a lot of the shooting so guards. A lot of the shooting guards in the NBA now does, does, does not look over six four. Okay, so name six, them. Six four over. 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 Name like, them. Like, uh, like Devin Booker. These guys don't look that tall to me. Is oh, what no, I'm saying. I mean, Devin Booker is a chip, man. They look like six three, six four at most. So you don't think Devin Booker is six six? No, I don't think Devin Booker is six. Have you ever seen Phoenix play in no. real life? I've no, I don't think Devin I've Booker is six. I've seen Devin Booker. He's six six. Devin Booker, actually, I was watching the ninety two series and uh, Jordan's ninety two series. I feel like Devin Booker plays a lot like Jordan. I feel oh, like Lord. Like what? I'm not Ain't no you. way. People oh, usually yeah. wait, wait. Wow. wait. Yeah, people. Later, people usually talk about mm-hmm. how Kobe Bryant has a lot of similarities to Jordan, but when I'm watching, I'm putting, I'm putting a side by side comparison. A lot of the pull up jumpers, a lot of the pull up. Jordan went to the post a lot more than the the, the book, but his yeah, pull up jumper, his a lot of he come off screens. When he come off screens, um, his pull up jumper, a lot of his actions that he gets with a lot of open shots he generates, it looks a lot like Jordan. It looks Jordan like. Obviously, Jordan's way more athletic. And I feel like that's where the, the edge comes from, but I feel like there's like, a lot of similarities in their game. That Jordan was like historically get great foot first foot step, like first yeah, step, yeah. like like and that's why I feel like it's so there's so much advantage in being a guard who's so athletic. Like I, I sometimes I think about um the way D book he'll generate a shot like if he comes off a screen, he, he instead of throwing up a floater, Jordan could just jump from like the free throw line and just get to the rim so much easier than D-Book. And that's why I feel like a lot of people underrate how good Jordan could translate into the league today because if you look at someone like Devin Booker, imagine D-Book with like and, and like like Anthony Edwards' athleticism. It's pretty crazy to think about, to be honest with you. Uh, Mars, can I, Mars, yeah. can I just answer the question about the 6-2? I was like, what about Kyrie Irving? Okay. And he's terrible on defense. That that goes back to my boy. Like I'm, I'm not taking anything away from Joe Mo, Joe's offense. I would I think say offensively he would be fine. Hey, Mars, but what do you think about World B3? If you're expecting him to be the the, the equivalent of a Jordan stopper in today's game with the size that they play with, it won't. It won't. That would not translate. I disagree. Okay, okay so why do you think Joe Dumas would be a great defender in today's game? Me. Yeah. Oh, easily. But it's same the same way Drew Holiday operates. He guard he guards the guards and then they switch him off for a player. He guards those players too. Like he'll he'll guard a KD. I done seen um them um Drew Holiday guard a KD or um get switched on another bigger player. And he guarded him pretty good. Is Drew Holiday not okay. stronger than Joe Dumas? I don't know. I don't know if he's stronger or not. Like, but. Joe Dumars is strong, but his foot speed let, is let, really let me ask a question real quick. What is it that Joe Dumars does on defense that yes. would translate well in today's game? What is he good at that will make him a good defender? I can, I can answer that. What he does is on ball in front of defense. What he does is keep the defender in front of him, and he also cuts off the passing lane as well. So his threat of that in today's game where they do a lot of rotation is very deadly because if you know, for example, if you know he has his man on the wing. I'm sorry, Mars. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm after you, Dom. I'm just letting you know. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, if you know you have your man on the wing and he's playing defense, you don't need that help side defense on the back end because Joe Dumars can keep in front of his man. As opposed to where on the weekend if the pass gets crossed over – Let's say Triple J is rotating. He can rotate and be in position earlier because they know they can rely on Joe Dumars being in front of him, sort of like an Alex Caruso type. He could be like that. But I'm not saying to that level. I'm just saying it could be in that How effect. tall is Joe Dumars, by the way? He's 6'2". Six, 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 six,
could one not argue that Joe Dumas was so good at staying in front of people because he didn't have to Actually, yeah. defend above the three point line? That's what I was gonna say next. Ooh, they didn't have to cover as, they didn't have to cover like as much that. space. Like that would kind of make a lot, a lot of perimeter defender obsolete throughout the era. Like, wow. like if you say no. that, yeah, you have to go till three point line. Then that is a very recent trend. But y'all are forgetting though, y'all are only adding his defense. I already told you he's a 38% from three-point shooter in the era that didn't believe in the three-point. So in today's to game, that's gonna go up. His attempts would be like, I vividly up. remember Joe Dumar had like bonker years. series in 1989 final. He averaged 27 points on absurd shooting plate while sweeping the Lakers in 89. I could be wrong. Yeah. Joe Dumas oh, defensive finals, yeah. Yeah, he won finals Yeah, definitely won finals. That was after his dad died. His dad died and he right. went off. He yeah, and he did and he did that shoot in like no threes in the series because he wasn't exactly. much of a three, he wasn't much of a three-point uh, shooter. Like he was, could make but, was but that's what I'm three. saying. In today's game where he's allowed to shoot the three and he was 38 back then, his game wouldn't just be 16 points, it'll be around 20, at least 22. Plus the defense, that's a good combo right there at a 6-2 position. What did uh, Mars do well to stay in front of people is going to be my follow-up question to what you were saying earlier. Because you, you said he stayed in front of people well, but did you see him using his body a lot? Or yes. did you see him sliding his feet? Because from what I saw, he used his body a lot to keep people on the perimeter. And that's something he can't do today. Everybody is stronger than him. Jalen Brunson is running straight through him. There's but, no guard outside of maybe like Kyrie who wouldn't just run straight through him today. And so he wouldn't be super skilled in that. And as well, I think that he is going to be playing on ball a lot, like you said. So I don't know how he's going to stay in passing lanes when the game is so much more spread out and it's not as condensed as it was before. So he isn't playing these tighter passing lanes. He's having to play longer, further away passing lanes, and he's already limited by his height. Um, I don't know what his wingspan is, but I'm going to assume it's not long enough that he can get on-ball passing lane steals like Wemby. I was going to say good point about the physicality. He was good at moving his feet, but also in today's era as well, that contact when they lower their shoulder, even Brunson gets it. That's a defense. That's an offensive foul. Because you see the good thing about Brunson, him being small, he could slide in and he'll get that chest contact and it'll be a charge. And sometimes you're like, what the hell? But because he's small, you could get that off with Joe Dumars as well. Good point. I like that. But he was also good in sliding his feet. He used more of his physicality because when they contacted him, he didn't want to give them that space to where they can fade off and get into it. That's why when Jordan was playing against him, Jordan had to be more downhill. When Jordan tried to do that fade off, his hand was still in his face, still there. That's the good part about Joe Mars being physical with the chest and everything. What would you guys say Joe Dumars' defensive peak was? Around yeah. 90, early 90s. Uh, like 90 to like 93-ish. Okay. Because like I was asking so after they won championships, basically. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have There's listened to an interview from Dumars himself where Dumars essentially said that his main guarding philosophy was that he would let you score 30, but he will make sure that you score 30 on 30 position. His main thing was that. Like he will Him stick in front of you. Joe Dumas understood true shooting. Yeah. See? Yeah. I mean, yeah. like he, I just, he I don't think that a lot of people, I think that it's really uh, weird think, to find from older uh, generations that would translate today. Today, I think that the gap in physicality today from then and how much more advanced players are in their athleticism is really what wait, separates what? Whoa, 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 but look at where one at a time one at a time context well yeah I, go ahead yo, i was just gonna say on, remember what i said real earlier the loss from the physicality real, real quick, he still quick, had his foot hold, hold on hold on hold on cowboy i got you yeah hold on cowboy so little fellas what's going on um uh, mars what's going on my guys see you holding it down um i just i i kind of have to um challenge what logan is saying for you to say that jalen brunson is going to run through joe dumars joe dumars was guarding twos that were way bigger than him so for you to say that he had the lack of strength to guard uh jalen brunson is disingenuous on top of that he had fast feet fast hands 
he was the Avery Brad. He, I wouldn't say he was as ferocious on the end. No, hear me out, hear me out. But as far as skill set, have fast feet, strong hands, good IQ, um, ability to cut off certain driving lanes. Now, I understand the aspect of the spacing is gonna be is gonna be different. However, I think him having strong hands and having fa fast, quick hands can adjust. I mean, could uh, make up the 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 foot speed that you guys think that he wouldn't lack, or the spacing that would affect that. And as well, I think I just think the IQ and knowing how he showed so much ability um, as far as IQ and understanding the game, I think it would have just would have translated uh, in terms of that. If every Bradley can have. A career in the NBA, I think Joe Domas would have a, a career in the NBA. Now, would he be an All Star? I don't think so, but I think he would be a serviceable um, starting uh, guard. It's gonna be tough. It would just have to be a certain team to play around that. Same thing like Boston. Like every Bradley couldn't play on a whole bunch of teams. There were certain teams where he thrived on, and there were certain teams he didn't thrive on. So, I think people what people seem to forget about is that there's a lot of quick guards back in the like maybe the late 80s and early 90s. Like you're talking about Kevin Johns, you're talking about Tim Hardaway, you're talking about like maybe even later on like Damon Another Stoudemire, one. like Damon Stoudemire, a lot of these quick guards that players had to stay in front of. <laughs> and Joe Another Dumars one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, him so no, I guess they didn't match up a lot maybe. But my thing is that staying in front of Jordan in itself is kind of crazy considering how quick his first step was. Just being able to stay in front of him is something that people need to consider when they're talking about translating to errors because even though you can talk about how other players weren't as quick back then maybe but there's not a lot of players in this league today who were as quick off the first step than jordan so if he can stay with that there's not a lot of players today he couldn't stay in front of in my opinion personally i would say this though that the narrative that he single-handedly shut down jordan is oh i don't certainly overblown like that no. did not happen. No, I mean, like, he stay in front of him. Like, this fact that That's he's just blowing by Jordan. I haven't heard it. Yeah, like, yeah, he him. have, like, props to him. He have endurance to, like, endure Mike. Like, Michael will take, like, it take heavy toll to guard Mike. I, I listened to Gary Payton in a podcast. Like, to guard him is, like, alone on single coverage is, like, a, like, tedious task in general. Yeah, that's and, the same but, thing about the 96 but, series. They say that Peyton locked him up. No, that didn't really you happen. Did, you yeah. did yeah. Like, like, nobody I guarded Jordan on a single coverage. Like, you can watch some early, like, before 91, 90, like, 89, 88 series against the Pistons and Bulls. It's essentially the entire team focusing on Jordan, looking at him. They are not even looking at other guys. They are yeah. not looking at Luke Longley. They are not looking at Horace Gant. They are not even looking at scouting people. They are like also, primarily yeah, this focused is the first on Jordan. You're talking about? No, 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 no. Early time. He's talking about, he's talking about the years that um, the Pistons were beating Wait. the Bulls. Oh, you? Jordan, he said Luke with Long, the Jordan yeah. analogy I used. Oh. I was saying that he was able to slow him down. Like for example, if you look at, I'll even use today's game. Last night, McBride against Steph Curry. I'm not saying he shut down Steph Curry. He slowed him down enough to change the game. That's all I'm saying. That's good defense because. We all know at any time Steph can go off, but if you can slow down a superstar to where you can win a game, that's good defense. I'm not saying Joe Dumars would be playing great lockdown defense. And if, as far as the teams that he could play with today, whether he's a two guard or a point guard, you could look at the Lakers, you could look at Miami, and you could even look at the Bucks. Any one of those teams, he would be better. I think he would be better at the point than um, Dane because of how he was with true shooting and how he's able to facilitate and they won't really need that much help on defense, and Giannis huh? can just go. I think – I'm sorry. I'm rambling again. But the Lakers in Miami, there's a lot of other teams out there as well. No, you were on to something. Like, trust me, I want, I want Joe Dumar in my yeah, team yeah, other than D'Angelo Russell. We do not want – because I want to keep the Marshall. defensive core there. I don't think Dame – I don't think Dame's offense was – to be honest great. with you, I think that Joe Dumar – effective offensively than Dame. Don't get me wrong. Dame is a better scorer. Dame can go off and have a higher peak. But what I'm saying is as far as consistency with defense and balance with what Milwaukee has, for them to have a guard that could probably give them 20 points with assists, high free throw percentage shooting, a score and play defense, Giannis can just play basketball. And it's free flowing. No. It's not like he has to give Joe Dumas the ball. That's the difference between him Jamie and Jamie. He's Dane like capable of having Dane 25 points per game, game season. Joe doesn't. Joe can play defense, get a skill, create for Giannis. Joe could come back and create his own three points. 
That was the okay, entire I'm, issue I'm, they I'm, had with Cheru, though, because they needed a facilitator for Giannis to help him create in the half court. And it's why Giannis looks so much better in the half court this year. Also, I wasn't trying to say Joe Dumars is going to be a bad defender. I just don't think he's going to be as good as he was. And the reason I brought up Jalen Brunson out of everybody is because he's the most physical point guard in the league by a decent margin, in my opinion. I mean, I see him use contact a lot. So he was the yeah, one. Yeah, that's a fair point, but I think, I think – I think with that, Logan, I think what you're taking away is how strong Joe Dumars is. Like, Joe Dumars is – he's uh, one of those guys where he's guarding – the thing. The reason why I brought the point is that he's guarding tools is that technically at that time during that era, um, the tools were way bigger than the ones uh, in uh, size, height, things of that nature. So I understand what you're saying. Jalen Brunson is physical. He probably is uh, the most physical guard, like, in terms of using that and – that bowling ball effect, it's kind of like Julius Randle of the point guards where he's just bowling, bouncing <laughs> off bodies and stuff. But it's, it's kind of nasty, boss. I'm about to hold you. But um, I think Joe Dumars um, with positioning, like I said, um, using his hands, That's and a lot of people uh, don't realize that. Like when you are aggressive with your hands and you are engaging first, that can disarm a lot of momentum that Jalen Brunson gets to get. Like Garland would back up and give like the free roam and then all you see would just, Jalen Brunson would just bum through. But if you dig in, and you're handsy, you can stop a lot of the momentum, and you would force Jalen Brunson to have to counter. That's why I think he'll make he'll make Jalen Brunson turn way more than you think. Especially only thing I agree with, I only think I agree with guy on, the only thing I agree with guy on is that uh, Joe Dumas' defense wouldn't be as good in this era. Cause y'all got to remember something: the rule being that the rule oh, changes man. what it is, it handcuffs the defenders a lot more so than the '90s and the '80s. And in today's era, the, the defenders are handcuffed a lot. They can't do really what they – even a lot of defenders say that, that they can't they, – they're more handcuffed than, say, the offensive player because the privilege is, you know, for the offensive player. It rewards the offensive player in this era instead of the defensive player. So I don't think Joe Dumas would be as good as a defender as he is or I, as he was back then. I don't but, can we talk about the rip-through? Can we talk about the rip-through and how that makes no sense? What you mean? The fact that someone like Chris Paul can throw the ball up in the air and just rip through the defensive player's arms. They took that out. They took that out. It's not. It's, it's yeah, not they did. Take that, out. that was that was James yeah, Harden's favorite move. Remember? But I mean, like when that when that when, when that was happening. That's what I meant. Like that was so dumb. Like, yeah, that was I James Harden's favorite think move. Though that, it wasn't dumb. It was fun. like, I think it's a foul. If you yeah, are if you are a great defender, you should have IQ enough to defend without touching a lot. Like. That should not be hard adjustment, in my opinion. You can't, you can't play defense without you can't you, play defense without touching someone. Yeah, I don't know how that happens. Yeah, because I'm gonna say if you think about it, when a person gets the ball and they're coming in and they turn in this way, you should be already up this close to them because if you give them that space, that's they're gonna blow right by you. So but most I feel like times that's when they get contact. the ball and they're turning, they're gonna get that instant contact. You're always gonna get contact in basketball. And also with everything that's been going on, I'm telling you, the league. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let somebody else talk. I'm rambling again. Uh, can I, I talk? Think about if you if you put your hands on someone, you run the risk of fouling them. And I think that, the rip is, the rip is just making, making is it crazy. a point. Now I think, I think how are you supposed to predict when they're going to throw the, your arms into the into you? I feel like you're. Just I mean, you should under, you should understand. You put your you put your arm. Um, like was nah. it leaving your hands in the cookie jar as they say? Right. You do that, you're open. You're opening yourself up for that possibility. I got and a question about that. You should have a you should have a clock in your mind in terms. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of like a playing basketball thing, but there are certain clocks in your mind uh, depending on positioning of where the refs are, things of that nature. Also, you know, film review, things of that, knowing tendencies, knowing certain moves, knowing how to count people's uh, dribble cadences. So I think that plays a part into it. Because look at Drew Holiday. Um, guys like Avery Bradley, like all these guys, Patrick Beverly to a certain extent. They're I see, I see what you're saying. They, you know if, what they're, they're if they're in the triple spot. threat, if they're in the triple threat, right. I guess it's, it, it's the best idea to keep your hands away from them. I got a question. The, the rip through rule is that like how Gary Payton used to be able to when people were dribbling, he'll grab his hand and fully secure the ball as a steal, or is no. it more of when we're grabbing rebounds that if I'm in position to grab something and someone hits me in contact? No, we're talking about no. um, how Chris Paul would – I feel like Chris Paul is famous for this. He would – No, James KD, Harden was famous KD, for it. KD too, yeah. If James you're, Harden. You're, it's basically you, you – Basically, imagine, imagine you, you, got, you got the ball in triple threat, right? So you're mm -hmm. facing someone up. 
And normally someone will like just put their hands out around where the ball is and they might touch your touch your abdomen or somewhere like that. Oh, and they just go straight and out. then you and then you just act like you're going into your shooting motion so they hit your arm. But you weren't planning okay. to shoot, but it's okay. your way of drawing a foul. But I, no. if you if you're as a defender, if you initiate the contact, you run the risk of fouling someone. And right. I, I think the offensive players just figured that out. And so that's why, and, and that's another thing I think about LeBron. I, that's why I think it's so hard to call fouls for LeBron because he initiated the contact, like what you just said. No, LeBron yeah, think, is just offensive I, fouling people. He's I think I, I've, I'm of the belief if the defensive player initiates the contact, call it a foul. If the offensive player initiates the contact, it's not a foul. Like, I, okay, you, okay. I, that's how I believe. You can't be the offensive player initiating the contact and the defensive player has fouled you. So, so if I'm coming sense. down here, so what LeBron does, if yeah, I'm coming down here and I lower my training. shoulder, yeah, it's if you come down here and you lower your shoulder into, 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 into my, into that's, your, your, that's, that's, that's either an offensive foul or a no. There's yeah, LeBron no and Tate can get away with murder. LeBron okay. and get away with like. But they've been they've been doing that as a no more recently, and the free throw attempts are going down around the league. They've been. But they've also just been ignoring foul calls, which is... Hey, Mars, why do people more... think that Clyde Drexler they, is the they best, so. second best shooting guard of the 90s? Why do they think that? Because oh, they, 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 yeah. they don't know who Reggie Miller is. It's cool, though. No, Reggie you're talking about the early 90s, not the mid. They, 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 they don't know who Reggie Miller is. Things about okay. Clyde Drexler okay. is, people forget he have, he was great in 92, but after 92, he Thank fall you. off from the cliff. I'm like, the fall off be, was yeah. insane after that season. Yeah, no, I want to talk about that's the sure. real right hand he bandit right there. Today's game, oh, for sure. Reggie Miller, Reggie Miller is Richmond? translating to today's game. Reggie, yeah, Reg, Reg, Reggie, Reggie. Reggie Miller would be, F. yeah. Now, nah, there's F. a lot of people that will translate, but Reggie, Reggie's one of the ones. He's, He's the first guy I've two seen. Players I want to kind of get y'all to about position. Position. is uh, Walt Frazier in today's game. Oh, you got it. You must be a fan, bro. Don't be pulling out that name out. Not at all. We go. I think we go Walt Frazier. Seventies. Okay. The reason. The reason I, I bring up Walt Frazier. I think and Jerry that West. like hold top on, five each player. Like, West. Hold, on, hold on, hold on. He was, he was talking. Jerry okay. West in today's game. I think because this is a Billy <laughs> issue. Um, his his concentration, his clutch. Yeah, Jerry West. Okay. Um, I think I think he would be his speed. I think he, even though he played in the era without a three point line, I think. He would be able to adjust, adjust to the three-point line, uh, definitely. Um, and then, well, Walt Frazier, I think I know John Stockton gets a lot of uh, the uh, the attention when it comes to pick and roll, but the pick and roll between Walt Frazier and Willis Reed was absolutely deadly in the seventies. Um, Walt Frazier also being a great point of uh, attack defender because of his size, because of his hands, uh, size of his hands. Uh, his length. Um, he was a bigger guard, even even today's standards. And I mean, Walt Frazier, when it comes to being cool in the seventies, there wasn't nobody cooler than Walt Frazier. I feel like people have a hard time. Thank you. I feel like people have a hard time gauging how good players in the past, especially like Jerry West or Walt Frazier were because of the rule changes. So like, you can't really judge Jerry West's handles. Like, you can't judge how good his handles were based on <laughs> right, 70s right. rules. Like, he, handles, if you yeah, if you put but, him in but, today's but, game, he may never lose the ball, but you never know because he can never put his hand under the ball in that time period. You never know if his handles was tight or his anything. His handle like was advanced for the time, though. Exactly. So you would never like, know. He was, like, he, he was dribbling with both hands in the 60s. Yeah. In exactly. the 60s and 70s. Like, don't realize handle is easy to learn. Handle is very easy to learn. People don't realize that. Like, oh, yeah. It's, the, it's probably like, one of the easiest uh, skills of basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. The easy thing easy about Jerry is that jump. Jerry is jump. 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 What, what most nice. people forget is that in today's NBA, most people go straight down as opposed to going blind the line, zigzag, cutting down, creating shots like a John Stockton. Prime example of how he would bring up the ball and have to cut from uh -huh. the line. You mean like closeouts? that type of? Excuse me. You mean closeouts? Attacking closeouts? You mean? You could even say closeouts as well. But like what I'm saying as far as Frazier's ability to move his feet that often and being in position, those guys from the back in the '60s using both their hands were far more advanced. So them uh -huh. being able to use their footwork then, they would be able to use it now because in today's game, most people just go straight downhill, get to their spot, pull up, and 
opposed to having the ability to go left, right, go to your spot, left, right, right spot. You see what I'm saying? Like that mix up. They would be able wait, to wait, hold wait, it up. Wait, hold on, wait. I think real quick, Cowboy, just to ask the question, are you saying that the NBA is there's less players that can probe side to side on the offensive end? Compared what to I'm before? saying is in today's game, what I have been seeing is people are more focused on the offensive end, getting downhill, meaning mid-range or to their spot to where they get in position, a pass goes out and they hit their three-pointer, or they get down into downhill and pull up mid-range and get their shot. I'm seeing more of that than I'm actually seeing other type of people coming down playing like John Stockton, rolling out, setting up the play. You see more cross court passes as opposed to people rolling into position. That's what I'm talking about, moving side to side. It's not as often. Most likely now you'll see from mid-foul line the to corner, slowed. that's where they're moving. So efficient yeah. basketball. It's just the a different the game, the, game, the, game, the game was slower. Um, back then, yeah, so it's a different it was, game. It was, more, yeah. it was more, like, how do you explain it? Like, the action that you had to actually get into something in the 90s and the 70s. Right, 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 okay, okay. You exactly. couldn't, no you problem. didn't, it was no very rare. No you just problem. had one guy just break down the defense, get two on the ball, swing, swing. Yeah, free free. Free. Yeah, yeah. Free. You had to Wait, run free. something. Thing is, though, like, though, like, but you know, counter pump to that is, it still result high nightly scoring. Like, nightly scoring was absurdly high too, even with that. Hmm? Who's a good, who's a good in, player? In, yeah, in the 70s, yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. Can we talk about Mitch Richmond? Right. Mitch Richmond would translate. That's a perfect dude to talk about. I was talking about John Starks, actually. John Starks is actually pretty good. Uh, The fact that he's really good, he's really up and down, though. His scoring was really night and cold. Oh, yeah. Give me Glenn Rice. Somebody talk about Glenn Rice, please. Glenn Rice. Yes, Glenn Rice. You know what? Real quick, real quick. quick, 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 Glenn Rice. With, with the names you guys have said, there is a super chat from Nick, which has basically said all the names you guys just oh, said. Wow. Mitch Richmond, Glenn Rice, and Tim Hardaway would all flourish. In Tim time. Hardaway, yeah. yeah. Instead yeah. of talking about I want to flourish. see my man Mario Chalmers in modern game too. No, you Wait, don't. What? Can we can we rank, can we rank, can we rank these guys? Can we rank these guys one to three and who you think would be the best in today's game? Oh, <laughs> that's Mitch man. Richmond, Glenn Rice, and Tim Hardaway. Who would be the <laughs> Glenn Rice one? Best, Mitch Glenn two, Rice, two, Mitch, Tim and Tim. I'm no, not gonna I say Tim. What I'm gonna say is that Tim no, Hardaway has Tim a would lot. Be the third man I say Tim first. Tim's no. post game is surprised me. Tim was, was really good, bro. Yeah, people, people under, people under, underrate uh, Tim Hardaway. He was no, really not good at all. And I he think he really he transported that. Uh, uh, all I know, Tim Hardaway Jr. getting canceled in today's game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And plus, we got to look, he's more of a John Morant type to me. So, like, the way he's able to explode the defense, get down to him. Mm, Tim, Penny Tim, was, Penny was Tim's jumper is a little better than No, nah, uh, Tim Charles. Hardaway is more strength to me. My boy, y'all said Tim. I thought y'all were talking about Penny. He's but he's not he's, he's, he's way, like, Tim, Tim Hardaway was very quick. But not Penny Hardaway. Hardaway. Darren yeah. Williams? Oh, yeah. Penny, you don't want to get me started. I said Penny, Penny yeah. Let's I was talking about Penny Orlando. Oh. Darren Williams? If he was drafted, Penny he's one of the NBA, like, hands down in this era. Penny Hardaway yeah, in Penny today's Cole. game, he's the third best point guard in the league. Yeah, he was, he was cold. Penny Hardaway he's was gonna cold. He's going to give you 33 minutes. Luka. Luka. 47%. Steph. He's going to give you, like, he's 30 points. points. He was he's so a, athletic. Yeah, yeah, it's so crazy. Penny had handles. Is he, is he essentially... Penny uh, Hardaway team made Dennis Scott will also thrive into the era. Dennis Scott. He's like, he would be, like, yeah, yeah, mid-range yeah. Tyrese... Halliburton would be nah, he has a Where's higher IQ. point guard Penny on the had three a higher IQ. who came from the Cavaliers. Who was he again? Penny Hart in my this might be crazy. My humble estimation. Penny mm-hmm. Hardaway was the evolution of what Magic Johnson was to me. Yes. Correct. I agree. Yes. I agree. And I agree with that. We never, we never, we never, we never, we never got to see it fully unfold, but that's what mm-hmm. he was. He was the I agree. next. He was the next step on that evolutionary train. I agree. I agree and with that. I think, I think Penny in today's game, hopefully with the health, the medicine, and all that. He stays healthy. I, I think. Yeah, being with cold, you're looking you know, at you're looking at a six, seven, six, eight point guard who can score high from, IQ, create levels, his own shot, post up, play yeah. make, get to the rim. Yeah, being with cold. cold. His post game league. is so underrated. His ability. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and say this: If the league had to see like ten years of Penny, it w- it wouldn't have been good. Mm. Plus, I'm, I'm plus, just saying, plus, it would have been good. He would have been able to get more blocks because of his it wouldn't have been, been good. If Penny and if Penny and Ron Hill were healthy when they were both teamed up. Who do you think is better? The East would have yeah. run through them. The East would have run through them. Who do you think was better at that time, though? Who do you think was better, Penny or Grant? 
I'm, I, I, I favor Penny, but I'm got bias towards Penny. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna go Penny. I'm gonna go Penny. I got, I got Penny, Penny was like go Penny. more consistent, but best season of Grant oh. Hill was slightly better. Grant, like Grant, Grant Hill, was, at his... Grant was a freak athlete. Like that's yeah. Jesus, that that but, first, step I think was, Penny, Penny, I think Penny was. was a, oh man, Grant's first Penny step was Penny. deadly. But so Grant was, yeah, Grant was so more as player. far as the players, as far as the players who can translate in this era. How far does this go back? Does this go all the way back to the George Mikan era? Or you could, you could go back to one player point. from that era that could be really good is Bill Sharman. Bill Sharman was like really Hilarious. good jump shooter. Everybody who could have said Jerry Bill Sharman. I want to hear this. I want to hear what he just said. said yeah, go ahead. and break that down. I seen, I seen Bill Sharman make a full court shot before in like an All Star game or something. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. He might have went there, Bob Perrin. But I think Ron I'm, Harper and Mark as Price. respectfully like, as respectfully like, as possible, no one from the fifties is translating. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't think, you don't think Mark can? Except you my man Bill Sharman. Bill Sharman like have three point range, man. Like that Great. man can Look shoot him, the lights um, out. As respectfully George, George Mike in his 20 if and you 10, played in the if you played in the first five years of the NBA, you aren't translating. Not first five years though, like, oh, like, George, like Bill Sharman was George all Sharman star caliber till end of fifth. George Mike was like seven two. Seven two. I thought he was six eight. No, George Mike was like six ten, six eleven. Yeah, dude, six eleven. Seven two or whatever. I got so two more Amari yes. six ten two four. Oh, Amari will go crazy into yeah, that. because look oh. at the game, how he was. With the good, you see Amari in the game, game, game though, right? What? And Kevin Johnson's miles away. Like 2011 season was very recent season, or am I bugging? Nah, the, ga the game's changed. Now somebody know, else brought up. You who go brought up Kevin Johnson. Like 2012, the game has changed so much in ten years. How do we feel the world be free? How do we feel about World Week 13? Nothing. I don't feel that's that way. Wow. I haven't heard in a minute. Wow. That's just my oh. life. He was cooking. Lord, he wouldn't be bad. Are you talking about Clippers World Week 3? When he was yeah. averaging like, what was he averaging like, 30? Something like that? He'd be he awesome coming numbers. off somebody's bench. He, he, he would be. Yeah, he, he was, Um, I mean, was I'm, a, I'm not going to make the claim that he translate, but he got, he got, um, he could get some nice hairline surgery. Hey, you know what's nice? Hilarious. You know what's nice? Henry Bibby. I was in the 1980 NBA Finals. Henry Bibby. Now, you talking about the Sixers now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do we feel about Bernard King? Nope. I don't think oh, Bernard King would. Okay. I think he would lead what? the league in scoring today as well. I, I don't think he would. His outside style was bad. Because, yeah, context. Okay, do you I would have said this, though. Whoa. Like, like the gonna... best player of era, except... 50, of course, like Wilt and Russell are translating, Kareem is translating, Magic and Bird are translating, Jordan is translating, regardless in any era, in my opinion. I agree, I agree with Bird and Jordan. I was gonna say, Magic. I don't think Bernard King, I agree with Bird. Mars, you don't think Charles, Magic watching those highlights for Magic in Sweden, he was doing the same exact move as he was doing in 1980, and he was cooking 2000s players. In Sweden, I don't care. It's still 2000. <laughs> 2000 and Sweden hoops is basically 1960s NBA hoops. Mm, mm, it's I don't know. No, it's not. He said, he, he. Uh, no, no, name, name, name one player who played in the Swedish league in 2000. I mean, I don't know, but what I'm saying is, okay, it's, so we don't it's still 2000, but it's still 2000. Yeah, if he doesn't lose the ball, NBA. he's a, hey, didn't Dub say he has the best handles? Come on, yeah, but that's not on here no more. I have to get him off the show. But um, <laughs> yeah, where, what, 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 position, what position would Magic play in today's game? Probably, uh, probably, he's probably the four, to be honest. Four. Nah, he'll play probably the point. point. Yeah. It's a league okay. pass. Yeah. Yes. If you think Magic will play the point, you're just delusional. You're no, just, you're not. Like, you are okay. straight okay. up delusional. Who is Magic? Okay. Who is I Magic? Say power cards. forward. Like Magic, when he come back in '95 season, he was playing power forward. He was guarding Rudy Gobert. That was Pat Magic. That was Pat Magic. He but was who's Magic yeah. Johnson guarding? Rudy Gobert. Come on now. So, so why would so <laughs> he, he could guard? He could guard forward. He could play. He could play. He could, play, he could be what no. Ben Simmons was supposed to be. He'll be doing just Magic like guard nobody. Oh yeah. my goodness, no! But Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson like, back in the day would guard fours because they would just stretch to the fifteen foot line. No. 
And he couldn't but, even guard them that well. To but today's game, game yeah. who's he going in threes? Probably guard the center. Like, 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 can we stop acting like more. we need every player to be no, Tony Allen or something like that? Julius Randle exists. How is Magic Johnson a defense and a pick and roll with Daniel Gafford rolling to the And not 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 more. I know you just he would be defending Tatum and Brown like that. Tatum, yeah, not more, not more. I know you just try to guard Tatum. Not not more. You won't see a lot of slide. Tatum would be hilarious. I know, I know you do that, man. Tatum will put up seventy. No, 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 he wouldn't. He put man. up 36 who on really good efficiency. Who would Mark? Who would uh, Mark? Guys, guys. No, why do we act like every best? Who, who would Magic guard in today's game? I mean, nobody don't guard nobody in this era, so it wouldn't matter. Oh. Hey, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in this, this right here is why that we don't have uh, anything started. Nobody literally guard nobody in this era, so it doesn't matter. I, 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 I think he like would he would guard whoever is the worst big. Still, the worst big. So I think let's, he would still guard the worst big. Team. So on the Celtics, who's he guarding? Who's he guarding um, on the Celtics? Al Probably. Al no, yeah. Wait, so he, oh, so, but Al Horford's off the bench. Holiday, so. wouldn't he yeah, be on exactly. Holiday? <laughs> so, Ma so Magic starts and he's just there. No, if he's, no, if he's guarding Holiday, Holiday, Holiday going he's for like he's twenty eight. He's, he's, he's guarding Boston. No, Boston. My fault. You said Boston. He's guarding Holiday. Boston is kind of unfair example, though. Like, okay, I get it. On the box, who's he guarding? Malik Beasley. Brook Lopez. No. Pat no, he might guard. He might guard Brook Lopez on the bugs. No, he would guard Pat. He would. He would guard. Pat Bell. No. Okay, Brooke Pat Bell's too fast. And then on the Cavs, he guards who? Evan Mobley. Most okay. likely. Yeah. Most so likely. Girls, yeah. sounds, okay, so then, but so basically, what you're saying is he'll guard. Oh, core core. You can put him in a corner. Like, like the thing corner. about Magic is he is Correct. good weak side defender. Like he will get in past. No, he's not. Like, no, he's not. <laughs> So At least bad. early 80s version. Early 80s He's slow on his feet. He can't guard the post because he's not strong enough. His hands are. That is 87 that's, that's magic. I'm talking about 80 to 83 magic. He's not doing anything on defense other than being six foot nine. That is the only. Yeah, I did not see 80 to 83 era magic. You're not going to overpower that. You're not going to overpower that. You can beat him off the dribble. He's from the fact that the Lakers had a great full court trap and he could just play behind and start getting steals. He wasn't doing anything. He was playing with like some Guys, of the most elite that. Magic defenders in the league the with Kareem sitting in the paint. Magic There's a reason Magic defense, didn't look for him. Like, first of all, time. like, Kareem never was some like world beater defender, first of all. Like, he could get punked a lot by many, many bruising type center, like Moses Malone, many times. And he yeah, was man. aging too. I you think also great. with the rotation, you know, the way that the, the, the game works with rotations and team defense, I think you could kind of hide Magic. Where mm -hmm. you won't force him to have to be this help side defender, you could kind but of you have him on a big corner. Help side. Fair point, but yeah. uh, but for the and most he part, he provides uh, nothing at the rim. Negative you know those, protection. No, no, no. You know those yeah, yeah, yeah. You know those I would, I would, I would, I would want him in playing action, bad defense. Uh, That's what Magic looked like most. But of they're gonna bring him into action. Like, there's how do you hide him? You can't you hide a six nine guy who can't do anything. Well, how many? I mean, how many? How okay, forwards are going to be involved in pick and rolls? Because that's, that's really like how many, that's yeah, really. What about back to the screens? What about they're going to they're about... going to just like for example, let's say they play the Mavericks or whatever, and you put you put Luca no not Luca you put Magic on whoever the weakest offensive player on the Magic on mm -hmm. the Mavs. Luca is just going to call for Magic's man to set the screen. Mm -hmm. Like that's what they're going to do. Yeah. You don't think you okay, no. but that's damn, but that's that's saying that everybody switches. I don't <laughs> that's, if, that's if, that's, that's, if that's you don't thing, switch and Magic okay. was very good at doing but that thing switch, himself. He has, like he has he good literally enough lateral quickness to where he, he shouldn't have to switch every screen. But Mar yeah. magic the lateral quickness in the same sentence. So it ain't that bad, that Mars. Yes, it is. My dude, it's a reason bad well, you have to be ahead of the thing. Magic has even somewhat positive lateral quickness. Magic was slow on his feet. Yes, he has. He was not slow on his feet. He was not slow on his feet. 
Side yes, to side. He, was, he, was he, was he definitely was slow on his feet. How can he be he slow on his feet and he ran he was, a fast no, break no, offense he was, no, and transition? Was up and down, up and down, sure, line, side, yeah, to side, side to side. No, no. It's not, it's yeah, not up that and down bad. with the ball in his hands. Yes, yeah, let me get down the floor. Side but, to but, side. But, 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 more, but, like, I could be pretty wrong. I, I, I will find the Pat Riley interview from himself. Like, Man, Pat Riley himself said that we let Magic guard Julia serving in 1982 finals. At least Larry has defensive highlights. But, but, but Mars, the crazy thing, the ironic thing about what you just said, your statement, is that Luca does the same thing now in this era. So it would be the same thing. He still would be doing the same thing. Like, not Luca. I, 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 I hope everyone is aware of the fact that Luca is a better defender than Magic Johnson. I hope you guys are just Trey Young is a Trey Young. Okay, whoa, 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 He's better on defense than Magic Johnson. I don't know. Like overall, or just because he has better lateral quick. Luca is garbage on defense. Yes, that's bad. I think you guys are covering too many. I think I think I think Luca does have better better lateral quick. And Luca is garbage. I think is that much better than Magic. When yeah, I think I think that's where Lucas probably worse is laterally, but as okay, can we focus on can we focus he's, on he's a better post defender. Um, he's actually awareness. Yeah, neither one of them are doing too much. Until I will not say Correct. he's better post defender than Magic Johnson, man. Come yeah, on, I, I, I would give the I would give the nod to Magic simply because he's bigger in the post. It's, exactly. it's harder to it's but harder Lucas, to. But Lucas is stronger than Magic. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know nah. about that. I don't what know about that. Sure, not sure. What I don't know about that. I think Bird I think Bird Bird to me in this era is just a worse Jokic. So we're going to the 2002? Yeah. W. I mean, it's kind of recent, though. Yeah, I think any great game player from the 2000s, all of them are recent. Anything pre, like, 2017 is a different game. I'm gonna be honest. But how about I'm John Havlicek, y'all? Everybody in the 2000s will translate. Not anybody. Everybody in the 2000s will translate. I mean, if, you're, if you were an all star or a French all star, you should be able to translate. Let's see how Ben Wallace translates in today's game. Ben Wallace, he's blocking everything that comes in there. He's the most elite. Ben protect that. Tell me the difference between Ben Wallace and Time Lord. Like, what is the difference? Robert, Robert Williams cleared Ben Wallace on offense. How is That's, Ben Wallace not unplayable offensively? I mean, he was, he was almost unplayable back in the 2000s, but he's yeah, still... In the era where offense player. wasn't as good, so you could still get away with having right. negative offensive play. In the, today's game, how is Ben Wallace playable on offense? You don't have to be his like, defense to make you like time lord. Pretty simple. Like, his defense going to make up for his offense. on offense doesn't make up for it in defense. So the fact that he can't contribute offensively in today's game, it hurts more than what he can contribute defense. I disagree. I so, disagree, dude. I he's got four defensive player of the year award. True in an era where you did not – offense was not at, a, at an all-time premium. Like it is now. In a league where, by your own admission, offense is the key right, right now. Yes, How it is. How can Wallace play in a league where he's going to be by far the worst? Because of his defense. But no, you said no one plays the Use him on Dunker's sport. I mean, use no, him in no pick and roll. Like, yeah, like, yeah, he, 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 he will not shoot. shoot. What does Ben Wallace do defensively that will make him playable on teams? Right. What do you mean? What he, everything? What does he do? Everything. Do? Block, uh, run protect at an elite level. Yeah, sure. and really and elite level. And then what, what else? Uh, like it should not be hard to tell why Ben Wallace, ben Wallace was good at defense. Like I mean, this wait, thing no, 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 yeah. defensively, Bill Wallace in this ben Wallace, era ben Wallace should be able to guard centers, should be able to guard forwards, an and some guards. Thank you, Mars. In an era this like today, where the court is more, right. where the court is more right. spread out, where physicality is less allowed, unlike it was in the Thank early two thousand. That I disagree with that. Where you can't like, really hide bad offensive. My Lakers literally run Jared Vanderbilt. We literally run Jared Vanderbilt. 
Dead, like Marty yeah, Stable yeah, is yeah, alive and yeah, 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 Jared Van and Jared Van der Poel becomes borderline unplayable in certain positions. Exactly. Matisse Stable is becoming borderline unplayable on the Blazers. Like Matisse Stable is not the defender that Ben Wallace got to get to at least. They are. I'm saying Ben Wallace is so bad on offense. How many minutes can he play? He will play a lot of minutes because, like I said, his defense is great. He will borderline I'm thinking, start, man. I'm thinking like, it's great. Well, ben Wallace is probably coming okay. off the bench giving him about 15 so minutes great. tonight. If That's about it. If defense is so great, if defense is so great, why are all top defensive players at least averaging almost a double-double? Rody Gobert, his offense is giving him a double-double. Even you could say Nick Claxton, he's averaging a double double in rebounds and offense. In today's game, the game of just having a defensive big is non existent. Look at the Knicks with Don with uh, Mitchell. We have a big problem with Mitchell Robinson only averaging six points. That's why he's hurt. been out. Hold on. Since he's been out, even though our defense looks different, I Heart's offense has been giving us what we need to win. So in today's oh, game, it ain't. Oh, no. That's a lie. First of all, y'all added OG Ebenobi number one. Y'all added a lot of perimeter defenders. That's why. But I'm looking at the center position. That's why I said Mitchell Robinson's issue offensive. Ben Wallace is a good passer. He's good at the double team. What do teams do offensively to make Ben Wallace viable? He can't yeah. even really. He's not even a great dunker. You see him on dunker for something like, like that. He like the long passes. Nah, man. But he's under. Ben Wallace wasn't even good around the rim. Yeah, he that's, that's the no problem. Nah. nah. Let me, let me ask you a question. He actually took too many jumpers for his ability. Is one of the... You know what? what? How can he play late in game shooting 40% from the free throw line? He can't. He can't. He can't. That right there makes him play. Let me let me ask you who's better in today's game, Lamarcus Aldridge or Chris Bosch? Don't do that. Don't do that. Chris Bosch. Don't do that. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. Chris Bosch. This ain't man, supposed man. to be a tough and question. Chris Bosch is because of the ability, the way he can throw the ball better than Lamarcus Aldridge. His defense Even though Aldridge look, who's the better score? I was going to say defense. Oh, I think Lamarcus is a better scorer than Chris Bosch. Yeah, yeah, Bosch absolutely. Yeah, so you say. Chris Bosch would adapt more easily. Chris Bosch is the better. Uh, I don't know. Chris Bosch. I think Chris Bosch has really good versatility, but I think in an offense where you need somebody that can spread the floor, the Marcus would be on a bunch. Of, he could be on a number of teams. Oh, Chris Bosch. I don't. I don't Chris Bosch uh, spread the floor. Uh, uh, he's he like top five defense. He's, he's not Lamarcus. He's Marcus. cool. He was cool. I'm talking about Raptors. Chris Bosch. Y'all thinking about later in Miami? Chris Bosch. It doesn't Chris matter. In the he, was good. About, he was okay in the mid range. He, he was had, more about poking up, facing up, and getting to the rim. He did, and he did not like physicality. Well, I'm not so let's to limit get that out the way. He still was Chris Bosh. You know that, right? Even when he went to Miami, he still was Chris Bosh. Yeah, he can do it. He can do it. Chris Bosh did it. down low, just so you know, when he went to Miami, he just. Didn't do anything. Yeah, but, right. yeah he just didn't do it. As but the Marcus by the entire time like, in the and he was in the doing it when the Brown left. When the Brown left, he was doing it. He was doing it. He was doing it. He was doing it. He was playing in the post. Yeah. He wasn't three point. He wasn't LeBron James Chris Bush anymore. He High post, not low post. Yeah, sure, sure. But, sure. but the way the game changed, you're really going to low post, unless it's Jokic or Embiid or something like that, who can come on double. You're not going to need that, but Chris Bosh still game. played in the mid range in 2016. He just got asked to space out more. But the there. thing about Lamarcus, Lamarcus was actually skilled enough to where he could come off screens, catch and shoot. He could actually go all the way out to the corners and we be used reliable. That and this Chris was from, we, and this was from the did beginning. That with Chris Bosh a lot, this though. Is, I'm talking about LA from the beginning. He got to to Portland to the time he left the league. He always was an excellent corner three point shooter. Chris Bosh wasn't that until 20. 13, 2012? That's what we are talking about. So we are talking about Chris Bosch at his very best version. But if you can see that Chris Bosch figured it out, you can see that he would be able to figure it out in today's league, and you can see that he would be 
able to translate. He literally figured it out. Like you're, you're what, what, admitting what? that he can do this, and then you're saying no, he can't translate as well as this because this. No, no, I didn't say he couldn't translate. But my, you, you said the, you said no, no, no. You said the key point. He had to figure it out. LA didn't have he, to figure it out. He LA figured knew it out, though. Did. Like I'm getting confused. Like we were running Bosch at five lineup in 2030, brother. Where he was stretching it out. What the hell? <laughs> but yeah, uh, anyways, I think he's saying Lamarcus came in able to do the things Chris Bosch took exactly. ten years to be able. That's what exactly. he's saying. It's, it's, it's easy to understand. Yeah, but um, I just think, assuming Chris Bosch still figures it out, I think it would be quicker in today's game because he would be asked to shoot threes earlier on. I think that's just yeah. logical. But I think. For me, it's defense. Defense is where I think Chris Bosch takes the edge over Lamarcus. I think Lamarcus is the better offensive player. Yeah. But defensively, yeah. I think Chris Bosch just will be capable of doing more things, which is why I feel you don't him. you don't you don't think Lamarcus was a better rim protector than Chris Bosch? No. No. He was never a good rim protector. Never. What? Even in Spurs, they were protecting him. Okay, yeah, yeah. Are you including rebounding? How well he had a. Sorry. Wait, he was just going to tell you he was playing with DeJounte and Kawhi. Like, he was having. He was having less people attacking the rim because he had better perimeter defense in San Antonio, and he was bad at protecting the rim. I would watch no, them turn like I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, line yeah at forget 2016 like, OKC and Spurs series where like Adam murdered him on the board. Like we forget that or what? Hmm? Steven Adam killed him, right. killed him, like literally murdered him. Marcus was not a good rim protector. He was yeah, average, maybe. There's one, thing I'll, tell you, there's one thing I'll tell you Lamarcus couldn't do, and defense was it. I, Lamarcus was yeah. Lamarcus. Lamarcus is nasty in the post, but defense is not not where you're moving the needle at all. How do you think? Yeah. Uh, how well do you think Hakeem would translate defensively in, in today's era? In terms right. of just all the right. coverage is in best like, defender in the league, think, like best like, defender in the league. He would be Nick Claxton with thirty points. Best be defender Nick in the league. Uh, 30 points, Better. Nick Claxton. Yeah. He's more mobile yes. than any other yes. big in the league. Yeah. Let's not overthink. Let's not yeah, overthink. The, 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 the league right now, sure. Yeah. Yeah. He means when I, I, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I mean, if this was 2018, he no better than Anthony Davis. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah. it, 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 it completely gone, I believe I came a lot to Who's the better player in that year? No, Hakeem. Hakeem would I be think he would translate Hakeem better than Hakeem anybody. Would be better than AD because Hakeem's. He would be. Better. Yeah. But I'm gonna throw one in the dark. What about I you? Think the, oh no! Wait, we got a guy named Embiid who could play in the post game and also is good. And Ewing is very slow on his feet in terms of just being able to move. <laughs> now Ewing, Ewing used to be faster before he started in the league. Ewing have very very good jump shot relating to it. If you watch Ewing in the mid, yeah. like, whole entire okay. leg is Hold covered on. up in Ewing can play defense yeah. on Jokic, I think, a lot better than most other centers in today's league. I think Ewing can play better defense than the centers that are here now. I think but he can play better defense on Jokic than Sabonis would. Him and AD, I think, will be – I think <laughs> AD may get the better <laughs> end of it. Defense but I think good. Ewing – no, I'm so saying I'm giving you guys of who I think Ewing can actually hold down. I think him and AD would actually have a good game. I think amongst all the centers, I think Ewing can hold his own. Except for like the top three, but Ewing is, can play in this game. He can rebound, defend, and he could also I think, he can help I think, out. I think yeah, the, he had a good the biggest, the biggest adjustment right, those sure. defenders are going to have to make is the length of rotations is like double. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like – because it's That's all the way out to the three point. Think point. about the, the he, would be it's about Olajuwon. It's like I think like have a players time. stop rotating when he was around here. Like it feel like in his presence, nobody was dare to cross in the rim. Like yeah. when he was there, um, I feel like David Robinson would have a better time than Patrick. Yes, Ewing. that was what I was gonna say. Um, oh, but no, 100%. what's Ewing? What's what's Ewing supposed Dude, to do? Offense, offense when he. What's Ewing supposed to do on offense when he gets double team? He's just going to turn it over. Oh, yeah, so yeah, that's he, he, he's yeah, a, he, 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 top, he topped the 2019 Embiid problems, but like, what? Yeah. There's a yeah, video. There's a video. And also, 
And also comparing him to – there's nobody to compare him to because he scored – he didn't really have a very strong mid-range. Almost all of his points came from post-ups. Do you and They don't – yeah, and they don't post up a lot today. Like, they don't post up hardly at all. The only players who are getting – he might be able to get, like, a Vucevic type of offensive game, maybe. Um, but – Okay. He, his his offense is just going to be too bad, and his defense is going to get worse because he's not mobile enough to be as versatile versatile as somebody like AD. Yeah. And so his, people his usually think about defense and his offense are both going to regress. So I just don't think he would translate well. I, I think he was really good in the nineties. I would say though, like he will not translate, but relative to era, he is like top ten defender of all time. Relative to era, very very good defender. The People usually think, think of mid nineties the uh, Ewing when they think about Ewing, but I think eighties no, no. Ewing. I feel like eighties Ewing would retain it really well in this era. What what people forget is earlier in Ewing's career, career, he was, yeah, when he was faster. Like, he was top five. Marcy, people don't get that about Hakeem and AD. I don't know because someone said, "Oh, you got 80s defensive peak over Hakeem's." No, I said in eighty when eighty was at his peak, what the league required of bigs defensively in 2018, right. 2019, 2020. I think eighty like, is better at that. I do Hakeem. see the Hakeem switching a lot yeah. to the own guards, like a lot. Yeah, he could switch, but the guards he's switching on isn't the same as the guards that are around today. It's, it's not. Yeah. The same. They're not shooting. They're not attacking. Was, like you, the way the way you could, the way he could gap guards back then compared to not like he can't do those things. The rotations he'd have to make now compared to what he'd have to make back then is longer rotations. Hakeem yeah. was so great because his timing was so great. But when you only have to take two steps to get back to the paint, it's different. And Hakeem used to low key bend the de illegal defensive rules. Like you'd see him sneak below the free throw line. And he'd get away with it, <laughs> but now he'd have to play above the free throw line, like he'd have yeah. to. So his rotations are longer. I think, I think AD is better suited for that type of defense, which makes sense because AD is playing in that time. Hakeem to me is the best defender of the modern era, relative uh, to his yeah. time. But I AD, you Austin, could say AD, like AD Hakeem, to, Bill Russell is, is number one. Hakeem Olajuwon is second. I think I think everyone abused those uh, defensive rules back then. Uh, but I would say uh, you, uh, Hakeem. He's very light on his feet. Better. He's very he's very agile. So I feel like the adjustment would be very small. Very nice. But do you I know why? Like he did workout really. camps. He went to point guard camps. He also played handball and tennis. He didn't just play, you know, the normal tradition center. He went to camps to learn how to play like a point guard. That's right. why his feet was able to move. So if he can, that's what I'm saying. If you got guys like him who are able to learn and have that footwork, that stuff should be able to adjust in today's game. Because he's yeah, I saw, able to learn it then. Who's better offensively it. in today's game, Hakeem or Embiid? Embiid. I got to be honest. Oh, no, no, I got to be honest. Embiid. It's Embiid. Embiid can shoot the three. Embiid, man. Man. No, no, it's, it's the only Embiid. difference is the three point Embiid. with Embiid. And I don't think it's really it's The cool. difference is the free yeah. throws. But the difference to me is that the gap in offense is like it's – a, it's, a, it's a gap, but the defensive gap is equal on both sides, I think, right? So I feel like the gap on offense is is the same size as the gap on defense, like vice versa. If you see, you understand what I'm saying. So who's and the best thing is you, the passer the, that Embiid have become is very recent development. He wasn't that good of a passer in past few season. Yeah, he, he, he he's he's leveled up little by little each year for like the as a passer. Like but okay, so let me let me do this hypothetical. Every center in NBA history. The, don't God. start bringing me Brian Reeves or whatever, but like the senses, you know, who I'm George Mike, David, Rob da David Robinson, Shaq, Kareem, Hakeem, etc. All of them, Dose Dose Malone, whatever. they're all in today's game. Who's the top five senses? They're playing in today's game, the way the game in is today's made. Today's game. Oh, who's the top like, like oh, yeah. and Honestly, like, I think yes. who's the top five senses? In oh, today's game, might be wow. able to Fred Chamberlain might be the best. No cap. That's just Jack. stupid. That's just in Listen, today's he's game. Out of court. In Fred Chamberlain, Chamberlain, like in his, hear me out. Hear me out. No, Not the on. early 60s, Will that Chamberlain. I'm referring 1967, Will Chamberlain. That season. He's I'm still not the go, the gold tens tens merch. He's talking about the gold tens merch, and that's what you're talking about. I was gonna say Shaq and I was gonna say David Robinson. Those are the only two I really think. If that. we're doing today's game, it's gonna be Shaq Shaq team worse today. If it's today's game, all the today's rules and everything like that, it's Jokic. Because his game is uh, based on today's game. 
I just want to know the top five. Everyone, everyone, I'm going to go around the room. I want everyone to give me their top five. So I'm going to start with Logan and I'm going to work my way around. So Logan. Top five uh, I am trolling little bit, but yeah, let me think. This is tough thing to decide. Let yeah, people talk. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. My no, bad. Um, honestly, I think it would probably be D Rob, Jokic, Hakeem, Shaq, and then Kareem. D Rob, Jokic, Hakeem, Shaq, Kareem. Okay, Kawa. I got Hakeem, Shaq. Ah, I gotta say, um, Robinson, Jokic, and and be mm. mingled or jester i don't know one of them what what top five centers for what in today's, in today's the way the game is played today every center in nba history is playing in today's game mm. who are the top five okay i got hakeem i got shad kareem uh that's three mm. I'm gonna throw Bill Russell in there because he was just crazy on defense. Uh, <laughs> Bill Russell, in there. Uh, and, 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 and I'm gonna go. Yeah, I go and be. I go and be for my pick. Morris, Morris, who did I not have in my top five, and who do I have as my goat? You did not have Bill Russell, but you believe he is the goat. Interesting. But, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, minor. Do you have a top five? Yeah, um, oh, give me Jokic, give me Embiid, give me um, David Robinson, give me a King, and I won't be nasty on this last pick. Give me Nate Thurman. Oh wow! That's hey, Mister Shout out to him. Um, is That's Emmanuel here? I haven't heard Emmanuel say anything. Yeah, I don't know if he's I'm, I'm in class right now, okay. so I gotta be quiet. Oh. Um, okay. Well, Shall I give my Now I have final. But I'm not going to ask him for a top five since he's in class, but he just wanted to be on camera. Shout out. Um, K. Thomas, you got a top five? Uh, let me go Jokic, Embiid, Tim Duncan. Well, are you saying he's a, is he a center? I'm going to say he's a center for now. I'm going to say Tim Duncan. I'm going to say... I say Hakeem. I'm going to say Hakeem. And I'm going to say... I'm just going to be Shaq. Okay. And Killer, your top five, please. Um... Okay, so like number one would be Shaquille O'Neal in my opinion. Shaquille O'Neal and then Jokic, Embiid, Hakeem Olajuwon, and for last one, I'm going to go nasty, Bill Walton. Oh, wow. Bill Walton? Yeah. Wow. Actually, Bill, better, Bill Walton has a better case than Bill Russell. But, um, yeah, yes. That's fact. Far better. <laughs> Mostly everybody picked Hakeem, Shaq. Yeah, give me Soviet Embiid, Union or Vita Sabonis. And I haven't the, seen. I've seen nothing of what Arvidas was doing in the eighties, but I can't find um, any footage of that. Like it, I, it's I like it's just, the, the things I've heard. Like apparently he was like one of the five best players in the world, and he wasn't. In you ain't seen like, communism. It's like a fairy tale, you man. You can't, it's nothing out. Yeah, I want. I want to. I want to see. I want to see. But, like my. I guess my issue is like anyone picking these slow-footed bigs. Yep. Like who aren't like. Gonna, all-time great offensive players. Like, I'm sorry, I have a hard time thinking you're gonna build. Some I feel like Shaq offense. is the only player that. Bill Walton ain't Shaq. that. I will tell you it, that much. Everybody it, had the same four though. Everybody. Well, had it Shaq, depends on which Shaq, Shaq you're talking about. And like and for me, team. like for me, I'd try and like cheat the system and just say KG would play the five in today's game. Mm. Well, yeah. Him in there. KG would be the best defender the league. So, yo, yo, KG never Yoke traditionally play five, be, though, Mars. Like, Yoke can be David Robinson and Hakeem should be in everyone's top five, in my opinion. How yeah. would Shaq be? Like, KG, Mars, 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 Mars. KG just, was like Anthony Davis. He never liked playing five. No, he was like awesome. playing five in a league where it was more physical. Now, in this game, he probably just played the five because he have to. I got Boogie over him. Like, in early Timberwolves, they he his teammate were he, like Wolf always give him a big like Rashon Esterovich was there in early day, and mm. then Kendrick Perkins, then Brandon Bass. He always have those five men around with him. Brandon Bass big. Brandon big. Bass. Brandon Bass was starting five or 2012 Celtic when Kendrick Perkins left. No, he Bass said Brandon. I would consider. I would Brandon consider Bass is, How five. tall is Brandon? Brandon Bass was six eight. Yes, yeah, I would consider KG the five and Brandon Bass was the 
four. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you just sacrifice yeah. Brandon, Brandon Bass, Bass or whatever. Brandon Bass, Bass at the five and KG at the <laughs> Brandon four. Bass never <laughs> plays center. What is Brandon Bass, Bass doing in today's area? He might have watched it. Brandon Bass is going to have Brandon. the highest EFG on baseline jumpers of all time. You might have watched it called out uh, Rosh on the stair, but if you're going to say Brandon Bass. Yeah, Brandon oh, yeah, Bass okay, is the five is the how would, you use, how would you how would you how would you use Shaq in today's game anyways? How would you even like? Because what I don't know. Have, at what point? At what point does what Shaq did just get called offensive fouls? Mm. Yeah. What 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 do teams do the same thing back in the two thousands and they just hire they just sign players just to get fouls? I don't think so. I feel but like you guys also. Forget and also that Shaq, Shaq Shaq's free throw shooting becomes a lot more of a negative in today's game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because the offense, get, the offense is all around are more efficient that you can't afford. Yeah, to but himself. Shaq gonna give Shaq you can also pass. Shaq can also oh, so Shaq, 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 like, Shaq, Shaq can give you assists as well. If you look at when you, I was gonna say Shaq can also pass out of the double team as well. As Shaq was initially get, point guard. If you like, back, Shaq have said Shaq before. Get, like, yeah, again, Shaq was no so are we gonna talk about how slow on his feet Shaq is and how? But it's that's what that's what I was gonna bring up. He was bad at the game. Go Cowboy Bob. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you look at today's game and everybody's shooting the long ball and everybody taking these shots, Shaq was good for putbacks. So, yes, his free throws are effective, but he still was good with passing out of the double team, and he was also good with putbacks as well and also creating free throws. I'm going to get to the foul line. Yes, he was a inefficient, but his ability to get their next guys off because think about it. You don't have another center or another guy to back up to slow down Shaq if he's drawing all these fouls. I agree with you, Mark, when he gets the ball in the post and he's swinging elbows. What I'm talking about is if he focuses on getting the ball, kicking it out, and he also does tip backs. That's how his offense can gain. Yeah, even so, right. even if Shaq do go to the line, Shaq, the foul trouble that Shaq was getting guys into back then, I like, think it would be more no valuable yeah, today. Like, is it a hot take? More about, like, is it a, imagine, a Jokic, imagine, imagine Jokic getting two quick fouls versus Shaq. Oh, just, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Shaq. Shaq mismatch thing is definitely like that's why I think Shaq is like like honestly, that's why he no one can because no one's gonna match. he's gonna be a mismatch like the counter to like bigs who can't really play on the outside is you just go small right and that's the counter mm -hmm. that makes sense you go small against Shaq. You already like, small against Shaq. Like, hey, try, hey, like hey, if hey. the teams were to try to do that and like run like sort of five out and have Shaq like pulled away from the rim and make him extend because you know Shaq just didn't want to follow anyone out outside yeah. the lane. He, but let he's me gonna leave you. everyone. Hey, so, I, but like Shaq will be do you bad. Think, do you think the trade off is worth it? Like, oh my, my, I, I think Shaq also get downhill. Like Nineteen ninety nine Shaq, where like he was still pretty mobile, and then Shaq in the pick and roll. That's a, that's why the Utah Jazz were killing him. Thank that's why the, that's why the Kings were so bad for the, for the Lakers because Mike Bibby was killing him with pull up jumpers. Yeah, that Mike and Bibby. Now imagine that Steph Curry. Come on, man. You can't you compare a guy to a, you can't oh, compare a guy question. to a mere mortal, man. You can't compare a guy nah, to a Like you have to protect like, them. Yeah, and first yeah, of all, that Lakers team was kind of leaking out too. Of course, like, Shaq would have his weakness in the pick it and roll. It would be a problem. Uh, Carl Malone would killing him in the pick and roll. Well, I will say, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq does just provide like rim deterrence. Yeah. Like, yeah, you yeah, don't want to go up around Shaq. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Oh, what, what, kind of, what kind of are coverage they, is it? Are they calling the offensive fouls on Shaq? Or are they just letting him get away? Yeah. Yeah. Letting him get away? Yeah. That's why I don't know. I don't know. They let Giannis get away. If he's allowed to get away with the offensive fouls, offensively, he's just going to be incredible just the same way he was before. Were the offensive fouls up? Have you seen Giannis? Yes. you see what Giannis does every night? I think he'll be Yeah, but Giannis damn near leads the league in offensive fouls, right? Is it not him and like They're always at one and two. Yes. Cuts weird, but... Yeah, but, the call, but the two times that they call, but the two times that they call defensive foul on your center is going to be more valuable than the two times they call offensive foul on Shaq. Okay, so let's let's call two, let's it, let's what if they, they call two quick offensive fouls on Shaq? Oh, then we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> so let's let's so let's just run out. Then we put our mobile big. What about the hypothetical? What about hypothetical? Right. Also, they're just not going to put somebody like Jokic who can't play defense on Shaq. Like exactly. They'd rather consider that. Okay, then who are you putting on? Aaron exactly. Who, if you were the Nuggets, who, who, who you to defend Shaq with? 
Don't bring in DeAndre Jordan, Jordan off the bench. Let's start him. No, you have, you have Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Anybody, 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 the more anybody. we talk about it, Shaq's just a mismatch. I'm going to be honest. Like, yeah. 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 He's the biggest mismatch as Jokic Yo- 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 is today. He's the biggest mismatch as Jokic Yo- 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 Yes. Yo- absolutely. Shaq is going to be very, very good offense. Wemby looking at him. The reason I have him. Wemby is going to be in the first round. Wemby is going to be in the first round. Wemby is going to be in the first round. Wemby is going to be in the first round. Jack gonna try to bring down die. the whole rim on him. Okay, after locking him up, he might die, but he still looked him up. Hell <laughs> on Hell on here. Hey, what nah, I got nah, Jack, Jack struggled against Arvidas Sabonis when he was 50, so I mean. And Arvidas Sabonis was like big. Yeah. And, and what when, happened when, next when, year, man? They meet again next year in 2001. What happened in that series? Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Bro, you know, you know what's crazy about that? <laughs> they sweeped <laughs> them. <laughs> Irrelevant, irrelevant. I think what, it was they like went. They went to seven games when Shaq was damn near unanimous MVP. That's the proof I need. But what does Yao Ming does in this do in this era? Mm. Yao Ming, Yao Ming, Zach Eady. If he Yao, Yao Ming, he Yao Ming is defense. too big. He can't move. Yeah, yeah. Zach. He yeah, would yeah, still be in college. Good. If he went to college, he would still be in college like Zach Eady. You see, you yeah, Zach, that, Zach oh, Eady is not gonna work in the NBA. Yeah, he's too. He would have worked twenty years ago. But uh. Yeah, I was gonna be worse than Brook is in drop coverage, like with his movement. Like, yeah, can't move, and that's and yeah, and yeah, wasn't a very good rebounder for someone seven foot twenty six. Oh, it was so weird, so weird. But well. Um, like when Yao initially started, people thought this is a bust. Like. People genuinely yeah, he, he, when like, Yao started off. When Yao, when Yao, Yao, Yao had very good shooting touch though. That was like what was yeah. surprising about seven foot. I think Yao could shoot counter threes today. He would have figured. Yeah, I think he would have extended to the three point line yeah. in this era. But, but he, he has a nice little mid range. I don't know what he shot from the free throw line, but he was like a very good free throw shooter. So like yeah. those and that's things. Because he was able to catch it high, keep it high, catch it high. But Yao is another one who couldn't pass. For sure, and it took too long. It took too long to pass. Couldn't. Yeah, yeah, like his, his processing speed was just very slow. Like, yeah. It just took him a while to figure to see things. My memory is not strongest, so don't take my word for granted. But I remember Carlos Boozer cooking the hell out of him, like he could Carlos not Boozer. guard him. Carlos Boozer was a bucket. What are we talking about? A bucket. You think Carlos, Carlos Boozer, Boozer would be the good best Utah today's Jazz game? power forward of all time? You think he would be good in today's game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. That's you have to play the five. Uh, yeah, you have to play the five. I don't think so because that defense was. Nah, yeah, defense was good, but... I, I don't know. I think we're at a point where like those type of power forwards do they really exist anymore? Yeah, I think that's what. And I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he's good enough. Dead. Play the They've been dead yeah. since like 2080. Yeah, that's 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 why he could play, but he wouldn't be Carlos Boozer. Yeah, he wouldn't be the best Utah Jazz power forward of all time if he played today. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me let me read some more super chats real quick. Um, Brian Holiday said Joe Dumas will play point guard today. We kind of spoke about that. Um, of course, of course. Alan Nas said L Dub. He's not locked. Facts. L Dub. Um, Drink more water said he wants to see Mark Price in this era. Facts. Yeah. Anyone have any thoughts on Mark Price in today's game? That would be. Well, him and Steffi going at it. It'll well, be been said Darius Garland. Like some Mark old Price head I talked to like ten years ago opinion, but, uh, said I that he is be. Steve Nash but better. Uh no. I think it'll Whoa. be like a Ray Too Allen far. and a, a what did he Reggie say? Miller type going off. They he say he is Steve Nash, Nash but better. See, this some old cool. head. I, no. Oh okay, not you. Oh. In NBA forum two three four, way back in. 2011, we were talking about it. He's very good, though. He, his ability to come off screens and shoot right off the yes. Ooh, right? revolutionary. I feel like, yeah, he, and he could bank, he could hit a Free bank throws. shot right off the screen, too. Like, right? if you do greatest shooters relative to era, Mark Price would be top 10 shooter of all time. If you do relative to era, I think his free throw uh, percentage is like the highest in his history, or like second highest, I think. I know Steph's number Second one. Second highest yeah, behind yeah. Steph. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think if I know correctly, I think the top three is Steph, Mark Price, and Steve Nash, I think. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mars, do you got any more uh, Super Chats to read? Uh, we've got most of the 94 Magic squad could play in this era. That's um, what we was talking about with, like, Dennis Scott and them. Mm. Um, yeah. We've got be- – um, by the way, Magic led the league in steals mm. three times. Good for him. Defensive king. Come on now. 
But they don't have his defense. And then the, the final team. one, start bench cut, Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, and Derek Rose. Fully optimized in today's game. I'm cutting man. I'm cutting man. That's just no, not, not in today's game. And shout out to Muddy Man. Yeah, I'm cutting man. What is I'm starting to start 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 Unfortunately, it would be probably be Jason Kidd to get cut. No, just, yeah, not get yeah. cut. I'm okay. starting I'm, Steve Nash. I'm benching D-Rose and I'm cutting J. Kidd. Yeah, I'm doing that. Chasing yeah. kids. What the chasing fuck? Chasing kid in the half court is not good. What, what no, is Chasing kid doing on offense today? What? 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 I'll, I'll bet you that kid really? just because y'all hate him. Well, that's what I asked. Depends on which optimized. version of Jason Kidd you are talking J. about. I, I'm very high on J. Kidd relative to his time. In today's game, I don't get how you do anything but start Steve Nash. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I mean, like we are not we starting him, start but I am not cutting him, Mars. Yeah, cutting him is like you be I'll have the Derek Rose and Jason Kidd conversation. I'll have it. Steve Nash is starting by a wide yeah. wide. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Nash is not the yeah. person starting. Steve no, Nash is right. starting. There is no ifs and but about it. Okay, so let's have the Derek Rose and Jason Kidd conversation. Why is Jason Kidd over Derek Rose? I mean, I, I, I don't even think Steve Nash is starting, but whatever. Attack, yeah, but that's because you're wrong. It's fine. You can be wrong. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, the reason why, okay. The reason clear, why, better the passer, game. clear, better defender, and yeah, in okay. later stage of his career, is clearly better shooter, too. Like, Jake, okay, can't, can't 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 no, we can't make super kids. We are not making super kids. You're not getting yeah. Dallas Maverick shooting. Yeah. And his early I'm fine with I, I'm fine with Jason Kidd not being able to shoot and all that. But in today's era with all these shooters, you could post J Kidd up on the little guard and he'll be effective. Yeah, exactly. Jason Kidd played at the high post a lot though. Like he did yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I was also going to so say his passing ability. Play 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 no, he cannot play you defense. But well, then you were just you just the kid. Defense was good. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. as good as Derrick Rose's. Yeah, yeah, I think Derrick Rose um, played better defense like you, than like, Jason Kidd. There's, there's ways. There's ways, ways to counter what Jason Kidd can do in the half court. It's Who's staying in front of Derrick Rose? Thank you. Nobody. I'm just a little. That's why nobody. Not one person. I'm telling you, Derrick Rose's athleticism makes no sense. Derrick Rose. Derrick. Derrick Rose is calm around, but better. Mm -hmm. he, he jumped more over the yeah, more more consistent, right. and, and a better passer. The only like, thing that I was going to say that Jason Kidd has. But, yeah, but young Jay Kidd, Kidd athletically, is. too, though. I still don't you know. Not like that. Not like that. Great. Like, like, Jake, like Jay Kidd was dead. Derrick Rose was crossed from zero. Off to zero, mm. yeah. Zero yeah, was the quickest, quickest guard I've ever seen. But what y'all are forgetting, though, is if in today's game, if you need a guy like a Jason Kidd, what most people forget is Jason Kidd would rebound, Jason Kidd would pass, and Jason Kidd was also cool. a good Jason control Kidd a of the ball and like, created a play. I don't control. think that both of them in a tight playoff setting are world beater offensive players. Like, I vividly team. remember Mario Chomer shut down Derrick Rose for your all memories. And yeah, like, hey, both of them are not going to be super but, but we right. have What was Cowboy Bob saying? What was Cowboy Mario Bob saying? Oh, Cowboy, I, I did want to hear your point. argument the other day. Mario was not Lo so bad. Logan wanted to say something. Just, uh, so. well, I'm just curious. Here, what, what are offenses supposed to do when J Kid's getting guarded like um, like uh, Josh Giddy is, where they're literally just sitting in the paint waiting it, for it's him. Well, well, Jason Kidd learned how to shoot. He, he can also cool rebound. Cool. But that's what I'm that's what I'm You can't just give him shooting ability. You just can't. He just can't can't, learned how to no, shoot. No. He did obtain it, though. Shoot. Yeah, he obtains it in year 14. Nah, you know. I was going to say the answer to your question. Yeah, the, the years Jason Kidd was making it to the finals. That jumper was not there. Okay, hold on, hold on. Whatever, yeah, but, we're, we're picking a version of these players. So whether that's you're picking 03 Jason Kidd, 07 Steve Nash, 2011 D-Rose, that's the player you get. You don't magically add abilities to them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what we're doing. Yeah, give me 84 Jordan with the post game. Like, you know. For Jason Kidd, for Jason Kidd, <laughs> people forget that Jason Kidd was a physical player. So in today's game, his physicality, as far as defense gaining charges, that would work. Also, mm -hmm. Jason Kidd was good at controlling the clock. Also creating passes as well because when he would get into his little mid game post, people forget that he had a good turnaround. I, feel, yeah, he, he's, as I, well, I, I was gonna say as well as if his shot isn't hitting him and they're shutting him down like Giddy, he would be the guy to get down low and help out at rebounding as well. So even if Jason Kidd doesn't have the ball, he can still create off ball. Okay, I, 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 I got a question. You just, you just for described Rajon Rondo with a post game. 
Wait, nah, no, but, yeah, he, I was, he had, like, but I was just going to say that, Mark. You can't play off J. Kidd. You can't really play off J. Kidd because you don't want her to get comfortable and see the whole court. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I will say that's one one counter to, like, teams leaving you open is, like, great passes can, like, you have to... Yeah, you can't really play off a great passer like you think. I, I get that, but, like, I don't get what the counter is to you just putting a wing on Jason Kidd. Oh, I, I, yeah. we just run offense. Just because run back then, the hey, boy, sometimes it is what it is, though, boy. Sometimes you just gotta run off it. Just play ball. Like thing yeah. is, Mars, my thing is, like a very ideal NBA team is two Danny Green and two Tobias Harris, and like a very ideal team is two Danny Green, a Tobias Harris, and Jason Kidd and Brooke Lopez. If I have team like that, I want Jason Kidd rather than Derrick Rose, if it makes you give, sense. You give Jason Kidd no lock threats? Are we serious? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta have one. He's giving him shooters? No, no, no athleticism? No you forget how he was with Kmart. Oh, yeah, you, you, like, you, you, you gotta give Jason Kidd a Blake Griffin or something. Like, yeah. Zion, something. Some. No, good. Hold on. With, so with when we doing this, are we thinking like in a one year sample size? Oh, what's like happening? How many? How how long do we got these players? <laughs> oh, you give you get you get that version of that player for. Well, that was I'm saying. like, I'm like, his knees are gonna give out, so you know. Not yeah. we are, we're assuming he was healthy in 2011, so he's healthy forever. Right. Man, I'm going. He was <laughs> healthy <laughs> for <laughs> not yeah. like he yeah, had all star it's, caliber it's, season it's, before 2011. And he was all star caliber next year, too. So, like, we have like three year sample size of what D Rose was. No one's staying in front of that. Like, that's just not possible. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like, so, Jason, I think, Jason, but, I think but, Jason Kidd's defense becomes less valuable in today's game just yeah, by the error of the error. But Mark, and that's one reason why I'm so I don't know about Mark, that, bruh. I don't know. Like, this is tripping tech. Like he was a really good switch defender, like really, really good switch defender. Yeah, but in an era where defense and, just isn't worth as much. I was gonna say, look at Ben Simmons' offense of how they use him. I don't even like Ben Simmons, but a lot of the plays I see them see Ben Simmons going downhill. He does kickouts. Jason King could play that similar style. Plus, when he's in it, he actually has a nah, better shot. Bro, I think than be Ben, ben Simmons. Simmons. He yeah. could be a super handoff merchant. You could use him to drop <laughs> in the paint and create he's opportunities gonna... because. You guys don't see the spacing that Jason Kidd used to do. Jason Kidd used to dribble to one side to create spacing and allow his offense to set up. That's what I'm saying. You can use him in today's game. You don't need him to score offense. But if you have a bunch of guys that can shoot the three and he's facilitating, like, look right now, Golden State. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, if you have, like, Golden State with the high potential of shooters that they have, if Steph Curry's off ball and you have a guy like Jason Kidd who's helping him out to where Jason Kidd is creating shots for Steph and Curry, Wow. You're saying you like he's a white Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd also had a horrible shot selection. True I enough. Hate true enough. I hate that just felt is, smart. Is D Rose much better? Well, like he would take well, well, like, well, well, not well, any well, horrible well, short selection. Well, like well, you are in fourth well, quarter. Last well, two minutes, he will take the most yeah. egregious three you will ever see. Yo, 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 I'm salute, salute everybody. Um, I, well, Mars, could you say that's a test of the fact that he was the number one scoring mm -hmm. option during the, the years that we were referring to? Like, if he you played in today's game, you can make that argument. Sorry, yeah, if he played today's game, he played today's game in the right system, you're not going to defend like Josh Giddy, not just because the IQ, but also depends on the offense that he's in. So, I put him on the heat. You're not going to stack him like you did with OKC because the Heat don't run as many ISOs as OKC. He's offense as stagnant as OKC. So, yeah, Jason Kidd. I don't know. Hey, I don't I, I might, what yeah, about the Magic? No, no, no I, I'm just saying. Magic? I'm just no. Actually, no. You need a, you need a team that can shoot, Cowboy. So his thing. That's the reason why I'm I'm starting J Kidd over Steve Nash, Morris, because over Steve, I can I can. Wow. It's not it's not crazy. It's not it's not crazy. So let me finish. You're right. Thank you. Stupid. I love you. No, 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 no problem. No problem. Because like like like. No problem. So anyway, so the reason why I say that, Mars, because Jay's kid don't have to be relegated to being the first scoring option like he was during his peak as the vision that we saw him. Like I said, you could put him on different teams where he's not the first option. We have adequate floor spaces where his lack of shooting ability wouldn't be as his adherence. Last thing, too, Mars, as you mentioned, not only the fact that Jay's kid was a good defender, good rebound, but also he's an underrated screen setter, especially for a guard. So that is very vital, especially to your off-ball volume. So he wouldn't be as liable. 
he wouldn't be as liable as an offensive um, threat as a person who can't shoot as a Giddy because he's smarter than Giddy. He provides way more value to Giddy off ball and on ball than Giddy, so he won't be defended as a guy like Giddy. So I that, that. oh, simply put, simply put, like that's how just how you can you can put up a hypothetical scenario of if we can put a small forward on Jason Kidd that would mitigate his scoring. That's the same thing Steve Nash on opposite on, de on defense. No matter what defensive scheme or team he's on, he's going to be a problem defensively. You yes, have to he's protect going to get him. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. So that's what that's what it is about your preference at that point. Which one do you rather protect? You rather protect Jason Kidd's scoring, lack of ability to shooting, or Steve Nash awful defense? That's what it comes down to. But Steve Nash, I, I think, I think it's been, valid. I think it's been evidently shown that it's easier to hide a bad defensive guard than your lead decision maker having an extreme flaw offensively. Yeah. Well, also, I think it's been shown I, just in general over the last like five, six years. I think one's a lot easier to hide. I've been curious about this for a minute. What role do y'all think Jay Kidd's playing? Because uh, what, what it sounds like to me is he's everything I've heard is six four Ben Simmons, but it's well. Yeah, everything I've heard is Russell Westbrook. Oh, yeah, no, is that no, 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 Mars, Mars, Mars. Think about that. Think about that. You have a durable, you have a, you have a durable, smart Ben Simmons. So imagine you put ben him in an offense that, well, no, yeah, smarter one. Yeah. So imagine, imagine if you put that guy like that, that archetype in the offense system where he's not relegated to be the number one scoring officer as he was on the Nets. He's also shorter than Steve Nash. Like, he's also shorter uh, than I, Ben Simmons, by the way. No, 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 no I know. I don't see a world where you got that level of spacing. Steve Nash, by his mm -hmm. own admission, said he'd be more aggressive. One of the best shooters mm -hmm. of all time. The ability to get into the lane in a time where the lane was more crowded, even though his team had spacing, but the lane was still more crowded. And his yeah, his team had the best. The lane, his ability to get into the lane whenever he wants and create great offense for everyone around him. Like you don't slow down that offense. Like that's I don't see the world in which that's possible. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not. I'm not I, get, I get the yeah. defense. I get it because he was a bad defender in a time where they weren't even mismatch hunting for real. I get that, but I think it's just so much easier to hide that than what Jason Kidd would lack offensively. He did get yeah, exploited. And that's what, and that's, it might be. It might be, predict, uh, like <laughs> perspective wise, it might be easier, but. I, in my opinion, I think the overall ceiling for your team, if you built it right, Jason Kidd, we slightly higher than Volvo around Steve Nash. And I see that's what dis or you dis agree to disagree. Because as much as I actually think Jason Kidd's defense is actually more viable today than it was in his time. Why? 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 Jason why? Kidd was why? why? Yeah, why? Why, why okay. do you think it's more valuable today? I, say, I think it'd be slightly viable today because Jason Kidd will be able to guard, be guard, be guard three positions. And the fact that off ball, if you have a, a especially off ball, one defense is more flexible. He wouldn't necessarily be just relegated to where he was back in his day on relegate on this man. He'll be actually one of the best Romans to set charges in the league, similar to what Marcus Smart was doing on the Celtics. That's what he, but that's what he was in his time. Okay, but no, I'm saying that. he'll have more freedom today. More freedom. Oh, that was okay. that slightly. Okay. okay, so he'll be the best point guard in defender in the league today, the same way he was in his day. But what I'm confused on is how is he gonna not be worse offensively today? Like, what more offensively can he do than like Clippers Russell Westbrook? Wait, he's gonna Clippers, be able to Clippers Russell Westbrook. Way way, now, way like, better, way better, way better the decision maker. He, he can actually, he can actually, he can actually he operate. Finishes. He can actually, he can actually operate in the post. The finishing. <laughs> It, it, it depends. Yeah, it's, hard, you know, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to quantify. Nah, I'm sorry. I'm I've watched it's hard to compare. It's hard to. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to compare. Take it. And Mars, you being nasty. Oh yeah, Clippers. That, Russell, that, okay, that pink. Yeah. That pink. Okay. That pink was yeah, crowded yeah, against yeah. J Kidd. So you being nasty. But it's hard to compare Jason Kidd's finish and Westbrook finishing. I'm not gonna cap. It's really hard because the oh, different yeah. the different factors that both guys they have. That space for New Jersey Nets was horrible all in the in the half. Yeah. It wasn't just because of Kidd. And the only floor space I would say this really about J. Kidd. Like, 2002 like, Nets wasn't some elite defensive team. Like, you could say that J. Kidd is one of the only few guards who by single-handedly make your team good defensive team. And 
Mars, 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 and, and Mars, Mars, and Mars, and, and, and if you if, if you can take but, but, but Mars, if you can take not Steve Nash's word for saying that he'll be aggressive, he played today's game. Why can't I take Jason Kidd's word and say if he plays today's game, he would actually put more effort in developing three four shots and, sooner? And I'm surprised, Mars, you didn't catch it. That um, I, they, 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 I thought we already set up that we're just taking what, who the player it, was and how it was. Jason That's not what Mar said. Well, we can't make Steve Nash more aggressive. Jason Kidd, don't you think? Wait, I don't think it was like. No, because Mars, you know, oh, guys back then, you know, guys back then was naive and stubborn. Like, oh, I'm not going to add three four shots to my game because I didn't need to. You know what I'm saying? Jumpers. But that's not the case. Took them. Like, it's not like he was benching. Yeah, he took he jumpers, took jumpers, jumpers, not three, not three pointers. <laughs> no, <but I'm laughs> my game is so much criteria so is we don't have to create the super version of the player. Like we ain't creating super J kid. And we ain't creating super Steve Nash. Well, we are just we're not giving Steve Nash extra abilities. All I was gonna say yeah. was this. You said he's gonna be more aggressive. Kid, That's not the, an ability. That's a motor. Kid is it? The Hold on, resilience. Re well, well, scoring, you are being oh, scoring, scoring resilience is not an ability. Scoring resilience is not a ability. Oh, resilience was already elite. Yeah, Steve Nash. Ah, uh, we I agree to disagree. Was, can I just agree? Oh, oh, you can't be a twenty-six point per game scorer in playoff, brother. How can, can you? How can you say? Wait, wait. No, no, no. Hold well, on. Most hold people on, hold on. forget Steve Nash scoring resilience. You know what the? Hell? Okay. Because wait, primarily because the, 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 they, they, because they, they, the number one because the, the number one component to Rosinga's Mars is aggressive. So if you don't yeah, have that, then... literally rice in playoff, my guy. What are you talking about? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Steve Nash scoring aggression increased in the postseason. Yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah I agree. Mars. Not moments. We have four Every season year. sample size. Literally Every four season, season sample oh, size. Oh, the, comparison, the comparison between Steve Nash and Jason Kidd to me is all on personal preference. Because if you look at the Jason Kidd of the Nets, how they ran their offense, it was grab a rebound, get down court as quick as possible. But they had bad, worse shooters than Jason and Steve Nash did. Steve Nash had better. They had the similar style system, but Steve Nash had better offensive players than Jason Kidd. So for me, I already know what a person can do without talent. I already know Jason Kidd is good in that aspect. So for me, today's game, if Steve Nash can translate, so can Jason Kidd. His defense would be effective, but he's running a similar style offense that Jason Kidd is. I mean, um, that uh, Steve Nash was. But it wouldn't be as effective. He's not as, as good as a shooter. He had Nash. lesser players at the time on the net. Yeah. If you put Jason Kidd on the on the um the same type of players as Steve Nash had on the Suns, not saying they had to play that type of pace, but if you gave him that option, his gaming would have been a lot better than where you would see, oh snap, he is playing the same exact style as Steve Nash was. Because it's the but, same thing. Grab the ball, get down court, and transition as quick as yeah. possible. But the but the That's threat cool. of Steve Nash being able to shoot is what makes that offense work. But we're talking Jason about can't shoot. Is, we're talking about if you're talking about starting and finish, you're right. But here's the thing: Do I need that on my team? Do is it easier to find a point guard that can score, or is it easier to find a player that need that can score when needed? Jason Kidd created his own shot with or without the ball. Plus, he also did backdoor screens to create for other players as well as rebounding. So his overall contribution, I think, is better than Nash. Nash, as far no. as offense, is better. But if you look at how they ran their systems, it's similar. It's just okay, Nash so was more effective well, because I, I, of the I think you can had. drop Steve Nash almost on any team in the NBA today, and mm -hmm. they make he makes that team significantly better. I agree. Jason so you can Kidd, put him on you on need the right Jason setup. Nash and they'll be better. Yes. No, it's the same. Oh, the I disagree with that. My, I don't mind it. That's a, that's a cap because just like huh, Jason, just how – Hold on, just how just how you have to find a a, a, a shot creator, at least shot mm -hmm. creator to mitigate some of Jason Kidd's flaws. You also have to mm -hmm. find a defensive anchor to cover some of Steve Nash's flaws. Yeah, matter of like, fact, I can like make an argument. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Time out, time out. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Oh. We're not talking oh. about that. We're not talking about. We're not talking about their time. Last time I thought. Last time I asked. Last time I, I heard. Then Marseille, if you would put them in today's era. So in today's yeah. era. It's actually harder to find a defensive anchor to cover Nash Wiggins as opposed to find an elite isolation score. There's almost every team, almost more than, hold on, almost 80. I, I'm, I'm going to say it again slow. There's almost 80% of teams in the league today has a guy who create on their own. That's a fact. Every team do not have an elite defensive anchor. 
Okay, so but that's, wait, so that's what, what that's... level of shot creation are you saying you need next to Jason Kidd? Are you saying normal? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Know, what's the what's the what's the what's the minimum? Because mm. yeah, no I'm matter what, for Steve. That, all right, so to keep this fair, to keep this fair, because yeah, you need help. elite. No, no, because you need an elite defensive anchor for for Steve Nash's defense. So to keep it fair, it's you the do know that well, Steve Nash know, never played with an elite defensive yes, anchor in his entire career, right? You do know we're that. Not talk- we're, we're, but we're not we're not talking about. He that never right. played with an elite, game, elite no. defensive yeah, anchor, and he still game. make that I, team I, I work. Think with you to a degree, sir. I, I think good. you're he right in the fact that you need a defensive without an anchor. Then he can be good without an anchor now. It's really easy to see. If he can be good in the 2000s with zero defensive anchors, he can be good today with zero defensive they're anchors. Both, they also, both will be good. That's not what we're talking about. But we're saying but, he would be better. But there's way more that Jason Kidd He's needs than best. just elite level shot creation. He would need a team of like Kawhi Leonard, SGA, uh, Jokic. Like he would yeah. need the highest level shot know. creators. <laughs> if you're saying that he needs ISO players next Wait, week, why, why do JK need. Because you said ISO. You, if he if he's having ISO players next to him, Jason Kidd, Kidd, Kidd needs something off like Gary Kittle. Zero off ball value. So these players would have to be able to score without spacing and with having a player detrimental to them offensively off the ball. But once again, so, why we're we assuming? Why we're we assuming? Why we're we assuming that Jason Kidd is on a team where there's there's little to no spacing? Why is Jason? Why we're we assuming that Jason Kidd is going to be? Why 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 is Jason Kidd is going to be the only person on a team? That he's the only guy that's not going to be provided spacing. Where in the league, there's honestly 90% oh, okay. of the league has spacing, has personnel for spacing. Okay, let's, 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 let's do this, Sturdy. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Put Jason Kidd and. Yes, your name is exactly. Your name is top five. on the worst team in the league right now. I got to finish the day. Who makes the team better? Who makes the team better on Washington? Who, who who makes the team better? Does Nash minor, make I'm, the Washington minor, minor, who I'm not does Jason minor, Kidd make Washington minor, better? I'm not minor, I'm not even going to cap to you. I only, seen, I only seen like three Washington games, and honestly, two of them. I'm, I'm not even going. I'm not even going to give you an assessment on that. I'll be honest with you, I ain't but seen I no think, Washington. I think. I think. I think. I'm not going to cap. First of all, not even Jesus Christ is saving Washington team. Like that team is like. Work of art, like work of art of creating a disaster class game. Look, Ain't nobody can Washington save them. All right, on Detroit. They, they, they play the Rockets tonight, and I'm not. I don't want that to be motivated. Steve Nash, 100% make Detroit better. Exactly. Like, like Jake, Jake Kid, that team would be like unwatchable team. Like <laughs> Kid and Jake Kid. Like oh my God, no <laughs> that would be that. disaster. Yeah, we don't want to see that. Yeah, but. Same yeah, mine. I don't like. I said I don't. I don't. I don't watch enough Wizards games to answer that question. I, 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 I get you. I get you. I, I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, but also, Kit doesn't have a scoring threat in today's league good enough for him to create advantages for other people. The only way he's going to be able to create advantages is his passing threat, which he's really good at. But that's going to come a lot in transition. And how much are we valuing transition offense? There are a lot of people who can be really high level transition offense. Why are we pretending? Why are we pretending? Even even with Jason Kidd's, why we hold on hold on? Why are we pretending like like, even even the modern era? Even the modern era, you can still. You can you can still create while having to be a good sh- sh- jump shooter. You know that, right? You still create for other people while being a jump shooter at court. But he's not a good enough of a finisher, and he doesn't take like draw enough attention driving to the basket for what? that to like. We, we'll agree to disagree on that one. We'll agree to disagree. Like, wait, wait, wait. You think, like Jason Kidd? Kid, Jason Kidd is not this scoring liability he's enough to where he like he's not this. No, no, he's not this in, in basketball minor. Everyone's a threat to score if you're in the right position on the court. So I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna make the pick Jason Kidd as a scoring liability as you're trying to say. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying, saying he's a scoring liability. Like, what kind I'm of Jason Kidd did you see in your head, Sturdy? Like, like a, that guy not was high. not good yes, enough. Sturdy is very high on Jason Kidd. I guess. That's I was just gonna say if we look at. No, Jason I'm just I'm just accurate on Jason Kidd. If you want to look at, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Jason Kidd no. in the half court, which means I just think no, no, like because him. because I understand because I've seen because well, I've seen no because I've seen Rondo dominate in today's game without a jump shot and because the simple concept in today's game. Oh my God! 2012, 2012. We are yeah, talking yeah, about. Yes, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she did on the yes, yeah, she did on the Bulls before he got hurt. But that's not the point. The point is, the concept isn't even today's game. 
listen I'm to the concept. Listen to the concept. The concept is no matter what error, everyone's a threat to score on the basketball court if you're a threat to get to the paint. I'm not going to say Jason Kidd is a is a y'all depicted Jason Kidd finishing because he was in a all big space half court session. I'm not going to depict him as that, especially talking about today's era where there's way wider driving lanes and he actually can get more opportunities to operate in the post more so than he did even in his day. That is true. How and I was also going to say, look at Josh Hart. Josh Hart's ability. Uh, I, I agree with you. He could operate look out of the Josh post. Hart. It That's goes back to Mars' point said, well, about putting a forward on him. You just put a bigger, you just put a wing on him and that neutralizes him in the post. No, it but doesn't. And, 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 okay, and then and we do the same. We do the same. And we do the same thing for Steve Nash and the pick and roll on the defense. What's your point, Mike? All I was going to say was but this. You can't you stop Nash and the pick and roll on the defense. And that, that was going to be my counter. You can't stop that pick and roll. The difference is you put a wing on Jason Kidd and it neutralizes one of his best ways of being a threat in the half court offensively. There's ways to make sure Steve Nash doesn't get put in pick and roll actions. There's the, are, if, the ball they, is in, if the ball is in Jason Kidd's hands and you put a wing on him, what's the way to counter that for Jason Kidd? Passing. He got great pay. He got good oh, passing. But if, you but if set, he's not you forcing set. help because the wing doesn't require a double team, because Jason Kidd was so physically imposing, when he had guards on him, he was able to back them down and force mm -hmm. defense to collapse. If you no longer have that threat, who's he passing to? No one's open. But he still got the pick and roll option. Wait a minute, who he say he hey, you, got, you got Jay Kidd, you got Jay Kidd in the pick and roll, and you go under the screen, therefore mm -hmm. not giving the roll man the roll to the rim. What's Correct. the counter? You could cut it or the backdoor cutter underneath the basket, or the roll man can get it. Take yeah, it there there, there, there can it. be a backdoor cut, but and now you got a, you got the roll man going to the rim, and now you got someone else cutting to the rim. You, you got, got the screen got right here. The screen's going this way. You have the other man on the back end getting the rotator. Yeah, that can work. And then you can have the ball go this way across to the man coming to the spot. That can work. Or you can use when the screen's going this way, that same guy going this way. Ball's going in the same direction, just going in two different places. You can go directly under the rim, or you can go to the back door cutting man that's coming out. That's what I'm talking about. I've seen Jason Kidd do that numerous of times. So even when you look at how he does the passing and the cutting lanes, the fact that they run a lot of dribble handoffs and pick and rolls now is going to be in Jason Kidd's best interest to be better but because that's makes, exactly what he's known for. What makes dribble handoff and pick and roll so dangerous is that you've got to chase over the top of the screen. There that you gives go. you the two-on-one with the with the low man having to defend two-on-one. You don't have to do that with Jay Kidd, and he doesn't have the explosiveness of a drama ramp or what Derrick Rose would have in today's game to still beat you to the spot if you go under the screen. He doesn't have that. So you're just going to meet him on the other side. So then I guess the counter is that you flip the screen and you have the low man on the wrong side of the screen. But then even then, I don't think you're creating a good enough advantage for Jason Kidd's half-court offense to be viable. It, like I said, yeah. like Mark, it, it depends. If Jason Kidd was maybe yeah, a little just, it depends. Or, it depends on his yeah. personnel. It depends on the personnel on his team, Mars. Because like, with like the flexibility, you can get more... I can I can get Jason Kidd out of that with running double horns if I have two pick and pop options in horns action. I can I can honestly if I have a another uh, primary initiator, I only have to start the ball with Jason Kidd's initiate offense. They have him coming off down screens and get him downhill to make more easy reads. Is both these guys I'm saying is depend on the personnel on their team for today's game. That's going to dictate their impact on offense and defensive end because that's what we're talking about. We're comparing we're comparing how how bad. The detriment of their weakness is going to be. Yeah, but okay. down, down screens, once again, you just don't have to chase over the top. And he can't shoot the ball, so he doesn't what get it, the advantages that other people get. That's, I guess that's that's where I'm low on Jason Kidd. What, what, it, today. what it sounds like, what it sounds like to me is y'all are saying that Jason Kidd is going to be sitting at the top of the key distributed pure facilitation that's no. going to be his no because no. that's the only thing that he can do if you put a wing on him and he can't because he, no he's i'm not i'm not going to restrict him well I'm not to 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 that. create an advantage with his scoring threat so i don't know what other than sitting on the topic of the key and facilitating because he has really high level passing and has super high iq other than literally just pure facilitation what can he bring in a half court offense because he rebounding can't score. Re rebounding that no, I, I said, I said the things the thing I said you don't value as much. Like I said, post scoring, I do think you still get downhill. You might not be an uber athlete, but you can still get to be a downhill threat. You can still like he can still provide a half court score, like being a, a good guard screener. 
that's value half court um half court viability. Like I said, it depends on the on the coach. Because if you have a Jason kid who's like, oh, we're just gonna give the ball to a high IQ player and let him trade. No, this is not gonna work. But if you're getting on certain teams that have a motion offense, then he could work. Oh, I'm not lying. It, but it's a hypothetical. There's no lying or telling truth, fool. Second thing is, or why would you put him on the Suns where this whole put him a wing on him? Now we have no wings to put on KD. We don't have we have less wings to put on Booker. So now they have more advantageous um um possessions where you can ice um be more be more um, efficient offense for them. So it's like it like I said depends on the personnel they own. Thank you. So you say today's yeah, I, game, I, 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 I ask what team, what system, and how they're gonna be implemented. Okay, so he's he's good in ball two of the best shot creators in the league to be good. Got it. No, no, no just like for Jason Kidd, just like for Jason Kidd, you need multiple. Just like for Jason Kidd, you need. I mean, just like with Steve Nash, you need multiple, multiple elite defenders to cover up for his weak ass defensively. Not necessarily. Same shit. Already. No, that's how teams work. That's how teams work. No, that's how that's how teams work. You, that's how teams work. I, I the think the Bucks were one of the worst defenses in the league, and we're still the number two seed in their conference and the number three seed overall in the league. So you there don't you need a high level defense to have a high level team. So no, you do not need two or three. No, they were number they were number two. They were number two with a bad defense during the first half of the season. But they don't have a bad defense anymore. Okay, the Nuggets do not have a strong defense and are and the number one. number one seed, I think. They might have dropped. I don't remember. Well, I, 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 disagree on, I disagree on the Nuggets not but, being a strong defense. There's actually better defense this year than last year. But, yeah, but anyways, it's still also the not that hard to build year. around a superstar player. We've seen many teams do it. It's not, like, the most complicated thing in the world. Either way, in it, the, the Super Chats had a fully optimized situation. There is no fully optimized situation for Jay Kidd because he isn't a good enough scoring threat for it to be relevant. He wasn't a good scoring well, threat then. He that's just wrong. Be is not a uh, okay. Okay. Low volume. That is ridiculous to say that he would magically become a good scoring threat. It, it's just you it, don't it's have insane. To and, okay, you and don't have either to way, score. if you give Steve Nash good defense and optimal offense, he's going to look – Ten times better than J Kid in a league where it is yeah. more favorable to the offense. It's just or it's or he just or he just gonna look like or he's like a white Halliburton or that. Hold on real quick. Let me just say something. But he's quick. better at everything than Halliburton. So let's just Hold fucking. On what's, wrong, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? With that Mars? Mars? What's wrong? With that? Mars? All I'm trying to say is he's better at everything. Your point. Better yeah, shooter. He's a better finisher. He's a better playmaker. He's not a better finisher. He's not a better. To your point, as far as his offense is inefficient. Yeah, he just finished sixty-seven percent. In what I'm trying to say is, to your point, better. to your point, as his volume. offensive, Jason Kidd's offensive efficiency, volume is, how is it that Josh Hart, a guy who doesn't shoot the ball well at all, can, can facilitate and rebound similar things that Jason Kidd would do, is creating in, his, in the offense for the Knicks? Jason Kidd would find his contribution as far as the offense. I may not be the scorer, but if I'm getting that offensive rebound and kicking it out to my man to score, that's contributing. If I'm slowing down the defense, creating turnovers the way I'm knocking out the ball because they try to do some lazy pass and it still knocks four or five seconds off the clock and they got to rebound the ball, that's how Jason Kidd can help you. He can also help you when it comes to steals and as well as boxing out. So when you have those threats of offense where, like, Sturdy said, the wing defender, now you have to put a wing on Jason Kidd. It helps out the team down low with the rotations. So there's other things outside of scoring that Jason Kidd, because of his higher IQ than most, will be advantage, will take advantage of. Now, when it comes to Steve Nash, Steve Nash, to me, only has that offensive higher IQ the way he can excel. He won't help you in rebounding and second chance opportunity. He won't help you with getting back on defense to where you can stop a play or slow down a transition. That in this league is very dangerous because if you can't get back, they all they got to do is wait for you to miss an offensive rebound and they're kicking it back to get back. At least Jason Kidd would be down there trying to interrupt the pass and trying to get back. So there's other things that Jason Kidd will bring outside of scoring. But doesn't doesn't that mean okay, that so Jason Russell Kidd's Westbrook man would leak out and be able to get easy buckets better, if he does that? If he's down in the in the post trying to rebound? I no, he's not going to leak out, Miner. If he's with him in the post, 
If he's All in the right. post, he's not going to leak out. But what I'm saying is, is if he's at the three-point line and he sees that his teammate, let's say he's at the three-point and someone takes a th- uh, three-point shot, he sees mm-hmm. that the rebound is going to go to the defense. He's going to start going back. Whereas Correct. Least, you would see, yeah, you would see Jason Kidd start leading back and reading the pass before Jason. So, before okay, 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 okay. So, you see what I'm saying? so you're saying he would be able to help rebound when he's in the post, when he's posting up a player. Yes, and he'll be able to get back on defense faster than Steve Nash. But if he's posting up a wing, he's not going to win that. That, that, that won't be the plus. He's exactly. not going to post. He's not but that post would help out if minus. he's with a guy like KD, as they because so, the wings on him. So you're, you're, you're telling me he needs the anomaly of anomaly of shot creators to be good no, because he needs a that. really. I just really explained to you. I'm, 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 yeah, trying, I'm trying to it's, envision this. It's just one. It's just one sided BS. It's like it's like we can only emphasize on Jason Kidd weaknesses. Well, anytime we mention any of Steve Nash weaknesses, we lost that over. We can we, we just can't wait. Cowboy not been up his defense. We've been just been blown on by other teams. We spoke about his defense. No, 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 no. Because no, because Logan, Logan is continue repeating the fact that we're trying to add the JCK game. We're only we're doing we're providing context to it. He's not a bad mm-hmm. finisher because of him of his ability. He was a he was viewed as he was even a bad finisher during his day. He was viewed as no, a lesser finisher really. because there was less spacing. There was no offensive threat on that half court team. So everything we're depicting JCK as a half court threat. Not just it's not predicated off his ability, it's predicated off the result of what he didn't have put on the nets. And that's not, he's not going to have a, a, a team as bad offensively in half court on the as the nets in today's game. Even even in today's league, he's not going to be good at getting to the basket. That's the issue. He is a decent finisher, yes, but he's not strong downhill because Mar said it earlier. He doesn't have a quick first step. He doesn't have some elite handle. He's not going to be able to get downhill well. He can't create space for himself with a shooting threat. There's no way that he's getting to the basket. Yeah, Jason Kidd wasn't and known for strong fouls. Like well, 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 that also, wasn't also, his game. Also, 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 there's other things he can do. He can give and go. He can come in and have his guy do a fake screen, do cuts. There's other things he can do to create spacing in today's game as opposed to back then. Plus, you also you don't need, yeah. Jason Kidd sets screens. So if in the process of him setting screens in the bottom of the court, he'll be running at the top of the key the way he can create even more to get more spacing. So, yes, he doesn't have a first step, but Jason Kidd has a quick enough eye to where if he gets into position with that spacing, not only that pass can get off, but he can also get into a position to where he can get the contact and draw to his spot. It sounds like Jay yeah, could be I, a role player. I don't know. I, I, also, I, I think when he's going back to that original things. question, a fully optimized – a fully optimized Jason Kidd situation is just not better than a fully optimized. That's what I said earlier. Also, uh, it, I just, just, it just isn't. Well, yeah. Hold on. I gotta ask. Well, minor, minor. Just, in a, in a hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I put, I put these dudes in two K. They got the same overall, so I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, okay, but they got, they got different yeah. tendencies. They got different stats. They might be ninety nine overall, but it's ninety nine is like created more things, like being able to do more things. Since when is that better than somebody being? Like really, really super transcendent in one thing, because we can all recognize that guard defense isn't as valuable as like elite high level offense. So when since it depends who you are, it depends. It depends on what the things that you're elite at, and also what the things you're transcendent at. I That's think like it's not just a what the thing. Okay. Yeah. No, he said he defense, said what the things were. He said Jason Kidd's yeah. defense. That's what he said. Guard defense doesn't equate to transcendent offense. That's what he said. Yeah. So and I said, yeah. but rebounding yeah, but that's, does. That's offensive not all what this kid is. Offensive rebounding creates offense. Also, as well as being able to do backdoor cuts and setting screens also opens up your man for spacing. He doesn't need to score, but if he's creating for your scores to score, that's still affecting your offense. As opposed to where Jason now. Jason Kidd is just a smaller Draymond Green. That's what I'm hearing. Did you say that? Okay. <laughs> okay, but like, effective is Draymond Green in that offense? Really he ain't Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you really being good. master, <laughs> like, that's, that's not like, He's not as good we, as we, Draymond Green. Although I do think yeah, that, I do think that that would be a system. Jason Kidd was great Jason in the 2000s. I just don't think he was great in the 2000s. I didn't disrespect Nash, bro. I didn't call this nigga, though. I ain't called Steve Nash Trey Young. I didn't call Steve Nash, like, I called him Halliburton. That's not disrespect. So like I said, like we yeah, you you can't be disrespectful. Just thought Draymond Green is better than Tyrese Halliburton. So yeah, <laughs> Oof. I don't what? even know if he'd be Draymond. I don't know if, if he's going to bring that Draymond level Green. of he, Draymond Green um, is better than Tyrese defensive communication. I get like Jason Kidd. Yeah. So and, and, I, if, yeah, you know he's changing peak. Well, I get if you. Draymond, I get you. If Draymond Green is even then, that's conversation. 
Rock <laughs> So, um, Halliburton has to be more than go New York, go New yeah. York. Thank go. you, thank you guys for joining the show. With, um, without dub, I, I appreciate you guys for just dub. Come me. back, hey, yeah. stop hating on my Knicks and stop lying, chill. You know, you like Knicks fans, me and you are cool. Don't lie but about yeah. that. Merry Christmas, guys. And I don't know what show's next, Pre- press books, open field. I think press box. One, one of the NFL shows, Is- um, but. Yeah, open, field, open, open field, open field, open field. Okay, there you go. Open field. Y'all guys have a good afternoon. May I have a good day.